One day in history, someone asked God, give me a home where the buffalo roam, and thus God made McAllister. It is a great day to play, too. It's been two weeks since the McAllister Buffaloes have stepped foot on this field to play a district game, to play any game whatsoever, uh, but they will get to play two of them to bring back the McAllister faithful to Mike Deke Field in McAllister, Oklahoma. Buffaloes are riding a two-game losing streak, but they're perfect in district play, trying to keep that going today and get back into the win column hoping to get two wins to improve to 9-4 and four on the year. Will Tulsa Memorial get their first wins of the season, or will McAllister continue to roll in district play? We're about to find out. Hello and welcome to Mike Deke Field in McAllister, Oklahoma, the side of today's district doubleheader matchup between the Tulsa Memorial Chargers and your McAllister Buffaloes. I'm your voice of the Buffaloes, Brandon Green, coming to you live on KNED, 1150 AM, 98.3 FM, the KNED app, as well as video streaming on the McAllister Radio YouTube channel. So the McAllister Buffaloes are going to be playing a couple of games underneath blue skies, not a single cloud in the sky. A little bit cold, though. We had it kind of dip low uh, as we have plenty of birds starting to make their way across the field. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the video stream. No, it's a little bit out of view, but There's yeah, a bunch of they're them. just migrating from center field on. Sorry I had to interrupt the broadcast for that, but I don't think I've, I don't think I've seen that. over. That's a flyover. We're having a flyover Mike D. Field today. That's from Mother Nature from herself. Mother, yeah, that's right. So, of course, next to me today is Austin Wheat. He's going to be helping us out throughout the broadcast on the video board and kind of chiming in here and there as well. Uh, but again, today, McAllister looking to uh, come off their 2-2 two and two showing at the Arizona Tournament, the Best of the West Classic, where they, again, won their first two games but lost their last two games. Again, some pretty good uh, talent that was over in Arizona that McAllister played, but still there were some things that McAllister did to bite themselves in the rear. And right now, you're looking at uh, errors, and you're looking at walks. So in the first two games, which McAllister won, they had 13 strikeouts to just five walks. In their last two games, seven strikeouts, 20 free passes given up by the Buffaloes. Also, it's been an error problem for the Buffaloes all of a sudden for the last three games, including their one win that they had, the 6-5 win in the second game after winning 6 nothing against Tolson. Uh, they did lose to uh, Willow Canyon 18-1 in the third game, lost to the one of the best teams in 5A in Arizona, Sunrise Mountain, 10-4 to after taking a 4 nothing lead uh, in the final day. That was six days ago over in Arizona. Uh, McAllister's had 12 errors in their last three games after having just 10 in their first eight. So all of a sudden, they've kind of been bit by the error bug. And, of course, in their last two games, it was really a lot of free passes. Teams taking advantage of those free passes, getting base hits to bring them in or getting walked in runs or hit by pitch in runs. So Buffalo's looking to throw more strikes today, trying to get back on the right track there, but also looking to cut down on the errors and uh, get some uh, momentum back into their bats. Again, not uh, great in the last couple of games when it came to hitting. Only had one hit against Willow Canyon. Uh, so looking to do a little bit better against Tulsa Memorial in two games today. So, uh, again, looking at McAllister district play-wise, they played Durant and they played Edison Prep. They defeated Durant 5-1 and 5-3, and then Edison Prep 13-2 and 13-12 two weeks ago. McAllister is currently fourth in 5A4 despite being undefeated with the plus-17 district uh, runs differential. Tahlequah is above them at number three at 5-0, plus-36. Kawita at number two, 5-0, plus-42. And Sepulba at the very top right now, 5-0, plus-45. We'll talk a little bit about who these teams are playing this week when we get the chance to, but we're about to have our starting lineups be announced here in just a moment. Looking at the Tulsa Memorial Chargers, again, according to OSSAAranks.com, they just played three games. They're 0-3, all in district play. They're led by head coach Jamal Adams. They've lost to Sepulpa 11-1 and 10-0, and then lost to Kuita 19-0. For those on radio, they're wearing their blue jerseys with their red numerals on the front and back and blue hats as well with the pinstripe bottoms for the uh, Memorial Chargers. And also for McAllister, they're wearing their alternate gold jerseys with the gold pants that they broke out for the first time six days ago over at Sunrise Mountain that was near Peoria, Arizona. They're also wearing their black caps with the gold bills, gold interlocking MB on the front. So Tulsa Memorial starting lineup one through nine looks like this. Leading it off the shortstop, number five, Aiden Sander. Sander at short. Batting second, the center fielder, number eight, Malik Lofton. Lofton in center. Batting third, the pitcher, number three, Hayden Perry. Perry on the mound. Batting fourth, the catcher, number 20, I believe, Amon Herring. Herring behind the plate. Batting fifth, the second baseman, number four, Yair Montez. Batting sixth, the third baseman, number 19, Junior Quezada. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number 13, Devin Schuler. Batting eighth, the first baseman, number nine, Jonah Vandegaard. Vandegaard at first, and batting ninth and rounding out the starting nine, the right fielder, number 29, Kamarian Whitaker. Whitaker in right. For the McAllister Buffalo, seven and four on the year, led by head coach Justin Mullins, perfect in district play. One through nine looks like this. The pitcher, number two, Caden Lesnow. 
number two batting, the shortstop number 11, Gunnar Hodgel. Batting third, the third baseman, number six, Gannon Mullins. Batting cleanup, the catcher, number eight, Braden Phillips. Batting fifth, the first baseman, number 21, Aiden Shumway. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number one, Spencer Stinchcomb. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number three, Jackson Lowerman. Batting eighth, the center fielder, number 10, Ethan Watkins. And rounding out the starting nine for the McAllister Buffaloes, batting ninth, playing right field, number five, Jordan Clark. Clark in right. We're about to have our national anthem after we have, I believe, a moment of silence. And we will be ready for first pitch. Before the playing of the anthem, we will recognize a moment of silence so that you may reflect, meditate, pray, or engage in other silent activity. We ask that you be respectful to others around you during this moment of silence. Thank you. And now, to honor America and the brave women and men serving our country throughout the world, please join in the playing of our national anthem. All right, we're about ready to play ball here at McAllister, Oklahoma. Again, Brandon Green bringing you McAllister baseball today alongside Austin Wheat, who's going to be covering our camera for the video stream as well as uh, providing some commentary here and there. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Beautiful day for baseball out there. Not a cloud in the sky. A little bit on the chilly side, and we got some wind blowing in uh, from center field. <clears throat> More like... What would you call that, bro? It's blowing in from left field. It's blowing yeah. towards the right field foul pole today. But, yeah. It's, it's not bad. A couple of wind gusts, you know. Might carry the ball a little bit, especially with these foul balls going over here on this uh, right line. But not too bad. So, good day for baseball. Yep, a little bit chillier today. At first pitch, is going to be 52. By the time that game two is over, it should be no lower than 48. And like we said, eight mile per hour winds a little bit higher when it comes to gusts. Right now, it looks like it's maybe gusting around 13, 14, 15 miles an hour and blowing maybe, towards the right field 16. foul pole. Yeah, maybe, maybe even 16. You maybe, never, maybe 17. Could be 17. We don't know. <laughs> Let's look around the diamond for the Buffaloes. We have Shumway at first, Stinchcomb at second, Hodgel at short, Mullins at third, and the outfield, Lowerman in left, Watkins in center, Clark in right, and the battery for the Buffs today, you have Braden Phillips behind the plate and Caden Lusnow on the mound. Lusnow so far this year, a perfect 3-0 record, 19 and two-thirds innings pitch, and he has been stellar, and that's – putting it lightly, 1.07 ERA, all in district play with the exception of Tolleson, in which he threw six and two-thirds uh, scoreless innings, and he probably would have went the full seven if it wasn't for different Arizona pitch rules. But he had he has 27 strikeouts on the year to seven walks, .149 batting average against him, and he's throwing nearly 60% of his first pitches for strikes. Speaking of first pitch, we're about to have that brought to you by Big V Feed Center. See Big V Feed Center in McAllister, Hadco Farm and Ranch in Kiowa, and Shakota Wholesale Feed Company in Shakota for your spring feeding program needs. These two teams have not played each other since 2021, where they played each other three times, twice in district play and once in the regional tournament. McAllister won 31 to nothing, 12 to 1, and then in the final game of the season for Memorial that year, McAllister won 18 to 5. So they're trying to stay undefeated in district play. Tulsa Memorial looking for their first wins of the season. We'll look at the district standings a little bit further like we mentioned that we would in just a second. But we're about ready for first pitch between Caden Lesnow and Aiden Sander. Righty on righty matchup. Lesnow looks ready. Sander is ready. Here's the windup in the first pitch of the afternoon. A first pitch strike from Caden Lesnow. It's baseball time here in the heartland. 
So the count's 0-1 here on Aiden Sander for the Tulsa Memorial Chargers right now at 5th and 5A4, according to OWSAA rankings, at an 0-3 district record, negative 30 runs differential as a curveball is a little bit up and inside on the righty Sander. And the count moves now to one ball, one strike. So Sepulpa's at the very top of 5A4, perfect 5-0. and All teams in the top half, 1-4, through four, undefeated. All teams in the bottom half, 5-8, through eight, of course, looking for their first district win. As here's a fastball swung on and missed for strike two, a little bit high. But Sander chases it, and the count moves to one ball and two strikes on Aiden Sander. Buffalo's playing in their first game in six days. So good break before they're about to have a lot of baseball in a short amount of time. The one-two will be swung on and missed for strike three, and that's the way to start the game for Caden Luss now in the bump. Sit him down, throw it around, one down here in the top of the first inning. Brings up Malik Lofton, the center fielder, number eight. Yeah, uh, the Buffalo's next game, they're not going to have a stretch of six days in a row with no games for the rest of the year. So that's the longest break that they're going to have for the rest of the way here. As this first pitch misses up high to Lofton for ball one. After today, they won't play again until Friday. And then next week they play on Monday, a doubleheader, but they don't play on Tuesday and Wednesday before they go to Noble for their festival. So here's the 1-0 pitch from Les now. It'll be swung on and missed for strike one. Count moves to even at one ball and one strike. But after that, after that next week, it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all through April. Busy month coming up in the month of April. 1-1 from Les now. Outside corner called strike two. Count moves to one ball and two strikes. Again, just getting started here in the top of the first with one down and nobody on. Started a little bit late here today. First pitch was at 4.01. 4.01 Central Time, game one of two. One, two from Deuce. Curveball, swing and a miss. Strike three, had him out in front. Sit him down, throw it around. Two down here in the top of the first inning because it's back-to-back -back strikeouts from Caden Lesnow up to... 29 now in the year, looking for number 30 if he can strike out the side. The pitcher, number three, Hayden Perry, digs into the box. As Les now winds and delivers the first pitch. Be in the turf for ball one. But going back to the standings, Kuita at number two, they're still perfect, 5-0, and plus 42 runs differential. Uh, Tahlequah, 5-0, and they're plus 36. Like we said, McAllister, they're 4-0, and plus 17. But we've had some pretty interesting, well, one pretty interesting matchup from yesterday in district play. So here's the 1-0 from Les now. This is going to be a fastball up and inside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to parry. So Polpa, despite being number one in 5-4 right now, they had a high-scoring game against Durant. I was pretty surprised when I saw the score. 17-12 to the final yesterday between Sepulpa and Durant as this one's going to be fouled off, and the count moves to two balls and one strike. But we knew this. We knew Durant's a lot better than they were last year. We know that their uh, their offense has improved greatly. As here comes the windup in the 2-1 from Lesnow, as it'll be swung on and missed for strike two with the off-speed stuff from Lesnow, and he has a chance to strike out the side to be able to begin game one of two against the Chargers today. Looking for the K. The windup from Les now and the pitch. This will be low. And we'll have a full count pitch coming up. Three balls, two strikes to Hayden Perry. Let us know where you're listening from today or watching from on Twitter at Buff Sports Radio. Again, that's Twitter at Buff Sports Radio. Or you can let us know on Facebook at Facebook.com slash McAllister Radio. The payoff will be fouled off and Perry staying alive. Three balls, two strikes. But I gotta say, it's it's great to be back in a press box. I haven't been in a press box truly in five games, and after being out doors, I like being outdoors. But here comes the three-two from Les now, and this one misses upstairs, and it'll be a full count walk to Hayden Perry as he gets on base and brings up the catcher number twenty-six, Amon Herring. I love being outdoors and everything, but at the same time, when I'm in a press box, and especially being over here at Mike Deke Field, what I consider one of the best. Uh, baseball, especially for 5A, baseball facilities in Oklahoma, I think we're spoiled by having this press box. And I get to kind of be a little bit more demonstrative with my calls instead of having to worry about, you know, an umpire five feet from me like I was worrying about in Arizona. I wish I wish we could set up right over there. Like behind the center field wall? No, right behind home plate. First pitch curveball crosses the letters to Amon Herring, the catcher today, number 26. Runner at first for the Chargers, two down, top of the first. <laughs> right behind the catcher. Like, right behind the catcher, Like yeah. in play, like yeah. not even beyond the wall. 
The 0-1. Runner takes off for second. The pitch is a ball. The throw down two. Second is in time. Braden Phillips guns down Hayden Perry. And that ends the top of the first inning. Buffaloes tied up with the Chargers 0-0 as we head to the home half of the first. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on KN. Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare. Your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001 Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte and McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Welcome back to Mike Deke Field here in McAllister, Oklahoma. The Buffaloes knotted up with the Memorial Chargers just going to the bottom of the first inning. It was essentially a 1-2-3 inning for Caden Less now. Two strikeouts. Hayden Perry reached on a walk but then was uh, thrown out, caught stealing at second on a throw from Braden Phillips to Spencer Stinchcomb. Let's look around the diamond for the Chargers. You have Vandegaard at first, Montez at second, Sander at short, Gazada at third, Schuler in left, Lofton in center, Whitaker in right, and the battery for the Chargers today. You have Hayden Perry on the mound, and behind the plate, Amon Herring. For Perry, he's a right-handed batter. For the Buffaloes, they're going to bring up Caden Lesnow, Gunnar Hodgel, and Gannon Mullins. One, two, three. Uh, sticking again, pretty much the same lineup. There's been a couple of changes kind of halfway through the year, uh, down around the six, seven, eight spots, but one through nine has been pretty similar uh, for the year for the Buffaloes. Batting just a little bit above 250, right around the 400 on base percentage. Looking to have a good day at the plate. Caden Luss now digs in. Perry comes set, working out the stretch with nobody on. Here's the first pitch from Perry, and it's going to miss up and inside for ball one. We do have Brian tuning in, saying, let's go Buffs, let's get the dubs. Listening from Florida, and thanks for being my eyes. Well, we uh, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you for listening to McAllister Baseball once again. As here's a pitch. Showing bunt was less now, but then pulled back as the ball falls into the turf and the count moves to 2-0. and The McAllister's had recent success against the Tulsa Memorial Chargers, I believe. Again, this is just their first game, though, against each other since 2021. As the next pitch misses well outside, and the count moves to 3-0 and on less now. Less now on the year, he's batting 244 with a 326 on base percentage. Only four walks so far. He's one pitch away from getting his fifth. Here's the 3 0. He swings after it. High fly ball, shallow center field. Lofton kind of lost it and it goes past him. It's going to bounce. This is going to be a base hit for Less now. He's around second trying to get over to third. The throw goes over the cutoff man. And rounding third is Less now. He's going to end up having a little league inside the park home run. So it's technically going to be a triple coming home on the air by the center fielder. It was a fly ball into center field, but the wind took it. It never hit the glove of Lofton, so it technically counts as a triple there for Les now. But the throw in got past the shortstop over through him, so he comes home on a triple and then an E8 to bring home Gunnar Hodgel, 
Buffalo's with an early one nothing lead on an like I said a little league inside the park home run by Caden Lesnow. First pitch to Hodgel misses down low and outside for ball one. Wind is blowing in from left center field, but still the outfield kind of playing back as this next pitch misses low and inside for ball two. And the wind is blowing towards the right field foul line, but playing all the way back. I mean, Lofton's only 10 feet, I'd say, 10 or 15 feet in front of the center field uh, warning track. So he had a long run to make, but then he looked up in the air, and his, here's a line drive over to left field, but straight to the left fielder. That's going to be hitting off of Schuler, and it rolls past him. Hodgel's going to get on base over to second, and this is going to be on an E7. As it was a line drive hit straight to Schuler. Now the throw gets away and goes into the goes through the backstop area. So taking third will be Hodgel on two plays, two errors. And that one or two elements of that play led to two errors. To the play for the Buffaloes. Number six. And that brings up Gannon Mullen. So two batters, three errors for the Memorial Chargers here. In the bottom of the first, Buffalo's already leading one nothing, and that, that, that's the that's the bad thing about baseball. Hodge will probably hit his ball better than Less now, but since that one actually hit off the left fielder Schuler, his first pitch to Mullins is going to bounce in for ball one. Since that one actually hit off a of Schuler, that one's going to count as an error. But the one that never made contact was a good five feet away from the center fielder Lofton. Less now is going to count as an extra base hit. So Hodgel at third, Mullins with the 1-0 pitch to him. We'll swing and foul this one straight back for strike one. One ball, one strike. Mullins leading the team with RBIs on the year with nine. Also has two home runs, leads the team in extra base hits with four. Although Les now did just tie that up with his fourth extra base hit of the season as well. 1-1, one, one, misses outside to move the count to 2-1. and one. Again, runner at third, there's nobody out. Bottom of the first, Buffaloes are up 1-0. Right fielder Whitaker kind of playing close to the right field line. Schuler in average depth right at the right spot. Is this one's going to be fouled up? Oh, may not be a foul ball. It's going to be in fair territory, and it's going to land between the left fielder Schuler and the shortstop Sander. Going to be driving home uh, Hodgel. And advancing to second on the throw will be Gannon Mullins. Again, since it just a little bloop single between Schuler and Sanders, it's an RBI single for Gannon Mullins, and the Buffaloes take a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the first. Brings up Braden Phillips, the catcher today, number eight. And sometimes you don't have to hit it very hard, just got to find where they ain't. Taking off for third is Mullins, and the pitch is going to be high, and that's an easy swipe of third for Gannon. So one ball, no strikes for Phillips. Buffalo's already up 2-0, bottom of the first inning. Still nobody out. Perry working quickly out the stretch. Sees Mullins at third and the 1-0 pitch. Going to be a hard hit line drive down the third base line. This is going to score Mullins on a slow jog. Rounding first will be Phillips. He's going to try to gun down the double, and he will run it down. Stand-up double for Braden Phillips. RBI double. And that brings up the first baseman, number 21, Aiden Shumway. The Buffaloes are already up 3-0. In the bottom of the first. Now for, the for Phillips, that marks his sixth base hit with runners in scoring position and his eighth RBI of the year. Shumway trying to keep a hot start. In the meantime, we do have a balk on the pitcher, Perry. So that's going to allow Phillips to move over to third base. Well, it's not... Not a great start for the Chargers, but a great start for the Buffaloes. There have been three errors by the Chargers. And, I mean, probably should have had a couple more fly balls already caught. So first pitch over to Shumway is going to go towards the left fielder, Schuler. Schuler comes in, and it pops out of his glove, and it's going to allow uh, Phillips to score. This is going to end up being an E7 again. The throw kind of got away from the second baseman, backing him up as the first baseman, Vandegaard. And that will be ruled as another E7, and that's the fourth error of the inning on the Chargers to bring up Spencer Stinchcomb. That just landed towards Shuler's glove, and it popped right out. And that brings up Stinchcomb up in the box with the runner at second. Shumway takes off for third, as this one's going to be popped up over towards right field. It's going to uh, ride that right field line and land foul in front of Whitaker. 
who couldn't haul it in and is going to give Stinchcomb second life here. But it's a 4 nothing lead for the Buffaloes in the bottom of the first with still nobody out. And Aiken, if you're just listening today and you're not watching on the stream, obviously Tulsa Memorial um, kind of falling on hard times. Struggling to start off this season. So here's the 0-1. That'll miss outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. But the good news is, again, the Chargers getting the team on the field, getting better, trying to keep on playing games and get experience for these guys. So here's the 1-1 to Stinchcomb. This one's going to be flied over towards shallow left center field. It's either the shortstop or Schuler getting after this one. This one's going to land, too. Never hit the glove of the shortstop, Sander. Again, I don't know if that's going to be labeled as a hit or, a, or an error that time. Again, probably should have been caught with the shortstop, Sander, but was not. We do have it being scored live on Game Changer as well, so we'll see what the official scoring is on this. Let it get caught up here. Jackson Lowerman now up the plate. Runners at first and second. Both runners take off, and that'll be an easy swipe of second and third for the Buffs. Lowerman with runners in scoring position. He's got both of his hits on the season with runners in scoring. He's got two RBIs on the year, looking for three and possibly four. The pitch. As we checked at, they're going to say Lowerman does go around. And that'll be one strike on Lowerman. One ball, one strike on Jackson Lowerman. Still waiting to see what they officially called Stinchcomb's strike of the ball. 1-1 one, one pitch. This one's going to bounce off the plate. And the count rolls to 2-1 and one here on Lowerman. Lowerman with eight free passes given to him this year. He's got just under a 300 on base percentage. Six walks, two hit by pitches. 2-1. Going to be a high hit, fly ball, left center field. Center fielder, uh, that is, Lofton comes in and makes the catch. This will end up being a sack fly as Shumway comes in to score. Staying put at second base will be Stinchcomb, and Lowerman gets the run in. That extends the Buffalo lead to 5-0 on the sack fly to center field by Lowerman and brings up Ethan Watkins. But the Chargers do have their first out as the Buffaloes go up in early 5-0. Center fielder number 10, So they ruled the Stinchcomb... Uh, Batted ball, a single. So he does get a single here. And taking off for third is Stinchcomb. This one's going to be fouled straight back by Watkins. Having to go back over to second is Stinchcomb. 5 nothing lead for McAllister. Watkins, again, uh, didn't have a bad tournament when it, come to, when it came to hitting the ball. Um, Watkins ended up going two for seven. Had four walks, though, as, again, his on-base percentage is second best on the team. It's a, it's a crazy stat. So here's the 0-1. It's going to miss way high, and the count moves to one ball and one strike. He's got the second best bat or on-base percentage on the team behind Aiden Shumway at 500, despite batting just 182, but, again, had a pretty um, decent Arizona tournament because he has 11 walks, and he has three hit-by-pitches. That's 14 free passes given up to Ethan Watkins alone, as this one's going to be fouled out of play, and Stinch comes to have to go back over to second after he tried taking off for third. So the count will be 1-2. Now Watkins is one of the three players on this team that played on uh, the 2021 McAllister team that played against Tulsa Memorial. And I think it was Watkins' first varsity hit. It was a three RBI inside the park home run. As the 1-2 is going to miss low. Count moves to 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, a three RBI inside the park home run for his first varsity hit for Ethan Watkins. That was his freshman season. He's got a runner at second, counting 2-2 two -two on him with one down. And the pitch. We swung on and missed for strike three. So Watkins is sat down on strikes, and that brings up Jordan Clark. So now two down for the Chargers. Buffalo's leading 5-0, bottom of the first inning. The right fielder, number five, Jordan. Jordan Clark batting 214 on the year, a 333 on base percentage. One for nine with runners in scoring, looking for two of ten as he swings and fouls this one back. And Stinchcomb has had to run back and forth between second and third. This now is his fourth attempt. But every time he takes off, he's 
Again, just having him make his way back to the second base bag. He's trying to take third for him. Clark had a couple of RBIs during the Best of the West Festival in Arizona, as this one's going to miss low. Count runs even at one ball and one strike. Two down for the Buffs, bottom of the first, five-nothing lead. Stinchcomb takes off again. This one's going to bounce and get past the catcher, Herring, as Stinchcomb takes a turnaround third, but will retreat back to the bag. Count rolls to two and one here on Jordan Clark. Kazada at third base playing even with the bag. Sander at short playing deep. So here's the two one. Popped up in the infield. Kazada calls everyone off and Sander now wants it. And Sanders drops it in the infield. I'll go down as an E6 so that scores another run. That's the fifth error of the inning here on the Chargers. And McAllister goes up 6-0. The third baseman, Kazada, called that at first, and then Sander called him off but could not bring down the ball. And that brings it to the top of the order as the Buffaloes have now batted around. Les now had a leadoff triple. That ended up coming home on an E8 as this one's going to be popped up but out of play. Clark took off for second, but he'll have to come back over to first. Yeah, it was a fly ball. I mean, probably, like I said, probably should have been caught. The wind is going to play a little bit of a factor today, but it's not really blowing super strong, but it will still change the trajectory a little bit when it gets into the atmosphere. But, again, since it didn't land near Lofton, it was a triple and then coming home on the E8 on the throw coming back in. Clark takes off for second. Is This one's going to be lined over towards right center field. Lofton didn't get a good break on it, and he can't get it as it rolls past him towards the wall. One run's going to score. Rounding second will be... Caden Lesnow, and he'll be held up at third base. It's another RBI triple for Caden Lesnow as the Buffaloes go up 7-0 here in the bottom of the first inning. So it is a 7-0 lead for the Buffs. Back-to-back -back triples now. I was mentioning how his first strike probably should have been caught in center field. That one was a ride out to deep right center field by the senior Lesnow. Gunnar Hodgel trying to drive him in. Buffalo's already up again 7-0. Perry comes set, lifts the leg, and fires. The righty will watch this one be popped up in foul territory. And we'll see if anyone can get to it as they just let it go. The ball landed in, in the third baseman bat, or the third uh, the third base coach box. And Gazada left it alone, and no one went over towards the ball. So Hodgel gets to have second life here. As, again, no one went after the ball. It landed where Coach Mullins is standing in the third base coaching box. Here's the 0-1. It's going to be popped up again in the infield. Another chance here for Sander in the middle of the diamond. Now they're both looking at each other, and this one's going to drop two. Hodgel goes towards second. They're going to flip it late, and he'll take second base. Again, this will be – this might be another E6. It, probably, it obviously should have been caught, but we'll see what it's officially ruled by the – McAllister's game changer. Run does score to make it 8-0. And it brings up Gannon Mullins, who had an RBI single his first time up. And they're calling that an, an E6. As the first pitch is swung on and missed for strike one by Mullins. Now Hodgel's now reached on two errors in this inning. Eight nothing score. McAllister up bottom of the first. Hodge will take it off for third as the pitch is going to be low. The late throw over to third. It gets past the third baseman. Hodge will going to be coming home. Throws backed up by Sander. He throws home, but it's going to be well late. And it's a nine nothing lead for McAllister here in the first. You know, I believe the count is 1-1 one, one here on Gannon Mullins. You know, Brian, I was thinking, we ought to start adopting an accent for some of these games. You're, what are you talking about? You see? Are oh, you talking about, like, go like old-time old, accent? Yeah, the old-style accent. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about it. It was so much fun, you know, back in the old days of radio when you had old broadcasters. And there's a strike right uh, down uh, the middle. I love see? how we <laughs> have had a long inning. I love how we've had a very long inning, and that is what you yeah, start yeah. your conversation with here in the first. 
Whereas we need to talk like the old time broadcasters. <laughs> Count is one two on Mullins. Perry takes a deep breath and fires the pitch. We low as well. And the count goes to two and two. We have Deuces Wild here on Mullins. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on base. Buffalo's up nine nothing. <laughs> I'm not speaking 19. Come on, you radio broadcast. Come on, try it with the next one. Just try it one time. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it on a fresh count. <laughs> and the next pitch. We a hard hit line drive right peg of the middle. This one might roll towards the wall. Mullins is going to be running first. It'll be filled by the uh, center fielder Lofton, taken off for second. Will be Mullins. It's going to be a stand up double for him there as Lofton was playing deep. So it's a double for Gandon Mullins and brings up Braden Phillips, who had a double down the left field line his first time up. And I do believe that young man deserves a Sunday <laughs> sarsaparilla, you see? <laughs> it's a 9-0 game. Mullins at second base, and Braden Phillips comes up to the plate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's batting 250 on the season with a 341 on base percentage. As Perry comes to a pause, Mullins taking a big lead, takes off for third, and the pitch will miss up high, and the count moves to 1-0. I'm not going to do that for an entire seven innings. There is no way they really talked like that. Uh, yeah, there is. There's no way that was their real Come voice on, 24 7. It. Maybe not their real voice, but that's what they did back then. That was that was the style. There's too many, there's too many like videos. As the 1 0 catches the outside corner, and the count now moves to one ball and one strike. And this is what you're going to see uh, when games start kind of getting out of hand early, like it's a 9 nothing game right now. That, that strike zone is going to expand a little bit. Phillips didn't like the call, but that will be a strike here. As the 1 1 will be swung on and missed for strike two, and the count moves to 1 2 on. Braden Phillips, who, again, had an RBI double down the left field line the first time. Phillips got his eighth RBI of the year in his last at-bat earlier this inning, looking for number nine. The two-strike pitch will be popped up, maybe playable. Herring trying to find it as the catcher runs after it, and this one's going to land just out of play. So Phillips getting to stay alive with a 1-2 count heading his way. By the way, I didn't uh, mention earlier, but in the sea of concrete... I actually parked at a safe distance. I'm glad. You, yeah. you, Coincidentally, by the way, somebody rear-ended your truck. I hope you're lying. <laughs> no, nah, I was making a joke that it was me. <laughs> I didn't do it. Two-strike pitch. Phillips will watch this one this way high, and the count moves to two and two. Yeah, uh, Nate Brown is on some of our broadcasts. He's going to be on our broadcast this Saturday. Also helps that during football season, some during bas basketball season. Take it from him. You don't want to park too close I to the still baseball field. How close was he? Was he like right here, like here, behind? Here's the 2-2 two -two that's going to miss low and outside to move the count to full at 3-2. and two. No, he actually really wasn't that close. Like uh, right over by the trees? He was kind of by the trees. Yeah. Have you ever been to Mike Deke Field where the trees are kind of at? Um, There's a line of grass with trees that's not right up against the field. It wasn't even his car. It, it should have been far enough away that he should have been safe. But the fact that he has bad luck. Kind of came into play. The 3 2 is going to be swung on a miss for strike three, and the Chargers end the inning, but not before nine runs come across the plate to score for the McAllister Buffaloes. As the Buffaloes brought, uh, that is 13 players up to the plate, and again, scored nine runs. Uh, we'll tally up the rest of the stats a little bit later on, but again, 9 nothing. McAllister leads going to the top of the second here on KE. Okay! Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here, so brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. We now head to the top of the second inning where the McAllister Buffaloes are leading 9 nothing over the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. Again, uh, like we mentioned, for those that are listening on radio and you want to kind of get a picture, again, the Chargers are struggling this year. Uh, again, but like we said, good for them to be able to fill the team, go out and compete today against the McAllister Buffaloes, try to get a little bit more experience to where uh, they have a better future uh, as they move down the line. But uh, struggling so far here in the first inning, there were seven errors. McAllister had six hits on top of that, too. There were no walks, but they also did strike out two. But seven errors to six hits for McAllister led to a 9 nothing start. We head to the top of the second inning where Caden Lesnow has had a great start to this game. He is uh, already with two strikeouts, one walk to him. 
And this is what I find really interesting about Caden Les now, too. His first varsity pitch, pitching appearance, which was a start, was against Tulsa Memorial. He went three innings pitched, gave up one earned run, four strikeouts, two hits, two walks. So, again, that was his first varsity pitching appearance. It was a start against Tulsa Memorial back his freshman season in 2021. And now he's starting again here as a senior in 2024. First batter, Amon Herring, back up at the plate. As the first pitch will be missing up above the letters for ball one. Herring came up in the previous inning, but after Hayden Perry was thrown out at second base, he digs back into the box. Righty on righty matchup. Here's the 1-0 pitch. This will be swung on and missed for strike one. Count moves to even at one ball and one strike. So the schedule looks like this this week for McAllister. Obviously, the doubleheader today with Tulsa Memorial. Friday, they have Red Oak at 4 o'clock back here at McAllister. So here's the 1-1 one -one from Les now. Curve ball. Checked. Did he hold up? Yes, he did. The count goes to 2-1. and one. But They play Red Oak here at home, 4 o'clock, and then on Saturday they play Broken Bow at noon. As here's the 2-1 popped up but out of play. Count moves to 2-2. Two and two. Saturday they play at noon. That will be a varsity and JV uh, matchup. Beginning at noon, Broken Bow on Saturday. 2-2 two -two pitch from number two. Les now deals. Swing and a miss for strike three. Got him with a heater. Sit him down, throw it around. One down here in the top of the second inning. Buffalo's up 9-0. Brings up Yahir Montez, the second baseman. So three strikeouts already for Caden Les now. Number four, Yahir Montez. Les now. Getting set as he winds and delivers the first pitch to Montez. And that'll be right down Broadway for strike one. Kind of mentioned this during the Arizona tournament, but want to also can highlight Caden Lesnow. Started today for the Buffaloes on the mound. As he shimmies, as he delivers a 0-1 pitch, it'll be a curveball swung on and missed for strike two. I love the kind of windup that he has, because sometimes he'll go with a normal windup, but then sometimes he'll do a little shimmy. It looks a little bit like Nestor Cortez, if you've ever seen him pitch. The 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike three. Got him with another heater low and outside. Back-to-back -back strikeouts from Caden Les now, just like he had in the first inning. He's already up to four, as that's now two down in the top of the second inning. Buffalo's leading 9-0 as Junior Cazada comes up, the third baseman, number 19. Cazada, rather. Les now, the son of Lacey Les now, Nathan Les now. Future plans to go to, a, uh, go to college on a sports scholarship and get a business degree is the first pitch into the righty. Kazeda is in there for strike one. He does have offers uh, most recently from Austin College. That's in Sherman, Texas. As the 0-1 is going to be swung on and missed for 0-2. He also has one from Culver Stockton College in Canton, Missouri. He's looking to strike out the side. The windup and the 0-2 from Les now. Curveball in there. Strike three. Ring him up. Got him looking. And that will be a strike out of the side for Caden Les now. That time with a backwards K to be the exclamation mark on that half inning. Buffalo's lead 9-0 as we head to the bottom of the second inning. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on K. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. 
Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. We head now to the bottom of the second inning. The McAllister Buffaloes up 9-0 over the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. Brandon Green along with Austin Wheat. I think you're going to have uh, quite a bit of talking time here today, Austin. I mean, I'm going to try. Normally they don't let me out of the cage or give me a microphone, but, you know, today it's just too good of a day not to let me out. Buffaloes up 9-0. Aiden Shumway leading it off the buffs. 5-6-7 hole batters up for McAllister. So here's the first pitch to Shumway. That's going to bounce in from Hayden Perry in for his second inning of work. Again, it was a nine-run inning for McAllister on six hits, seven errors by the Chargers in the previous inning. Uh, looking to continue the uh, offense here for the black and gold. One benefit as Perry delivers the 1-0 that's going to miss outside to move the count to 2-0. One benefit to both teams is the fact that the wind has died down a lot. All of, I mean, it's kind of still blowing coming in from left field, um, but it has died down quite a bit. Not not quite as many gusts. The 2-0 is going to miss down the turf as well, and I'll move the count to 3-0. Yeah, because uh, I think everybody, yeah, there's not a single left-handed batter today, at least that we've seen so far between the Chargers and the Buffs. So that wind's not, a, that's, wind's not helping anybody out when you're hitting. No. So if it dies down, it's going to help out the right-handed batter. It's still there. I mean, it's going to be going off and on, picking up, slowing back down. But It's a 3-0 is a curveball, swung on and missed for strike one. Count moves to three balls and one strike on Aiden Shumway, who reached on an E7. Shumway has been... Insane. He's riding a seven-game hit streak. During this uh, hit streak, he's batting 545 with two extra base hits, five RBIs. As here's the 3-1. It's going to be a line drive, left center field. This one's going to land, and that will increase his hit streak to an eight-game hit streak. The senior Shumway rounding first. The center fielder at Lofton fell as he was grabbing the ball, and that's going to end up being, I think, a double any anyway there for Aiden Shumway. And it brings up Spencer Stinchcomb. But Shumway, he had a great tournament, too. He batted 538 during the Arizona Best of the West Classic. Two RBIs, a double, and a sh just one strikeout. He had 33%, a whole third of McAllister's hits over in Arizona. As the first pitch runs in on Stinchcomb but doesn't hit him. And that'll be ball one. Stinchcomb singled the first time up, right up the gut. Stinchcomb has increased his batting average to just around 300. Around a 405 on base percentage. Nine RBIs. That's tied for the team lead with Gannon Mullins. Next pitch is going to be a hard hit ground ball left side. And it's going to eat up the third baseman, Gazada. And getting over to third will be Shumway. I think that one's going to go down as a base hit here for Stinchcomb on a just a rifle towards the third baseman. That makes him two for two and brings up Jackson Lowerman, who had an RBI sack fly. He said, click, click, boom. For the Buffaloes, <laughs> number three, so Lowerman Lowerman. scored a run, and he brought one in. As Stinchcomb takes off for second, the pitch gets behind the catcher. Shumway will stay put. He went halfway down the third base line. We got ourselves a thief. As, yes, we have a steal of second there by Stinchcomb. But, yeah, the ball went all the way to the backstop, bounced back towards the catcher, Herring. And the runners are going to stay put now at second and third. What's baseball slang for someone who steals bases a lot? Get this, as this one misses down on the turf, a base stealer. Oh, they don't have like a like a thing, like a clever name no, for it? No, that's off the top of my head. Y'all name hits a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned that. Y'all name hits a lot, but someone who like steals bases and stuff like that, not as much. 2-0 curveball, call a strike at the upper inside part of the zone. And the count rolls to 2-1 and one here on Jackson Lowerman. You count two and one, runners at second and third for the Buffs. Up 9-0 with nobody out, bottom of the second. As the next pitch, be a ground ball foul in front of Coach Mullins at third base. Uh, but it was funny that you mentioned you hitting and running my my truck, which you didn't do, but that's that wouldn't be the first time that someone did that at a sporting event with my vehicle. When was the first time? <laughs> I'll explain here after this 2-2 pitch to Lowerman. 
And he swings and misses for strike three. As Lowerman could have went over to first as it missed in the turf and there was nobody at first base, but Lowerman will, just, will walk off towards the dugout, and that'll be the third strikeout of the day for Hayden Perry, and it brings up Ethan Watkins. But the first time, and uh, we have Philip Jewell. He's tuning in as well. Thank you, Philip, for checking in. He said, hey, Brandon Strug did get a hit and run. The guy came back at Bishop Kelly. <laughs> that was during football season. As the first pitch to Watkins has popped up, foul territory. I don't think anyone's going to be able to get this. The wind kind of blew a little bit to take it beyond the uh, press box, and the count goes to 0-1 on Watkins, who struck out back in the first. Was it the your new truck? Yeah, it's that, that great truck. It was the last game of the football season this last year, and I came out to a, a note on the back of my truck that says, hey, I'm sorry I hit your truck. I'm not going to pay for it, but I apologize. It wasn't that much damage, really. I'm surprised you're not more upset about that. That's like your baby. As the 0-1 misses up high, and the count moves to one ball and one strike. No, that, that, that truck is called smoke because <laughs> of the charcoal gray color. But, uh, no, it, it, there was a... It wasn't hardly anything. He just kind of backed up into it, and uh, there the 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 what is it? The rear bumper? What is it called? The tailgate? A little bit? Yeah, like rear that, bumper. Where you kind of can step on to? Yeah, uh. yeah. Can't remember exactly the proper term for this. Is there's a foul ball towards the McAllister dugout, but it, it it drooped a little bit. There wasn't even a dent. It kind of just drooped a little bit, and I was like, ah, I I thank him for kind of sticking around and and waiting for me because he did stick yeah, around. Yeah. He, he didn't just leave a note. He also stuck around to see how long he could stay there. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's a two-strike pitch. is going to miss down low. Gets by the catcher, and this one's going to allow Shumway to come score. Rounding third, taking a big turn will be Stinchcomb. And the count, according to the scoreboard, two balls, two strikes with one down and a runner at third for Ethan Watkins. You heard it here on KNED first. You're allowed to hit and run <laughs> over Brandon's truck smoke. Just as long as you leave a note. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 two -two to Watkins. This will be curveball missing outside. And the count is now full at 3-2 and two on Ewat. Runner at third, double-digit lead for the Buffaloes, 10-0. Bottom of the second, one down. Again, runner at third for Watkins, the pitch. This is upstairs, and that will be a team-leading 12th walk for Ethan Watkins. Second on the team on non-base percentage. We'll see that increase. And that brings up Jordan Clark. That is still insane. Again, that's the first walk issued of the day, by the way, was to Watkins. The only person that got walked in the previous game against Sunrise Mountain was Watkins. I don't know what it is about Ethan Watkins, but he draws so many walks. He'll take off for third. As here's a ground ball. Foul just in front of Coach Mullins once again at third. So Watkins will have to retreat back to first. But I, I mentioned it his first time up. He's he's now around a quarter. I think he's probably right at a quarter of the free passes given up to Buffalo batters. Has been by Ewatt. The 0-1 pitch to Clark. He swings and misses on a low pitch. This one gets past the catcher. Herring as well and allows Stinchcomb to come score. Watkins will jog to the second base bag to get into scoring position. And the count goes to 0-2 on Jordan Clark, who reached on the E6 his first time up. Now, the Buffalo base or Buffalo baseball season has obviously been going on. This has been the 12th game now for the Buffs. As Watkins taking off for third, the two-strike pitch is going to be swung on and missed for strike three. That's another strikeout here for Hayden Perry. As it has been four out of the five outs for the Buffs, strikeouts. Brings up the top of the order for Caden Lesnow, who is two for two with two triples. One of them being an RBI. Has a chance to do it again here. So good start today for Les now. First pitch to him. We'll miss for ball one. Buffaloes are up. Uh, that is 11 to one, or 11 to nothing actually, as the next pitch misses up and inside. Gets past the catcher Herring once more and allow Watkins to score. So that's now a three spot put up by the Buffaloes in the bottom of the second. It is a 12 to nothing game. But, yeah, they ended up giving Stinchcomb that hit. That was kind of an in-betweener. They did give him the hit earlier this inning. 
2-0 the pitch to Les now. Curveball, line drive straight to the shortstop, but it gets uh, into the gap, and it's going to be fielded by the left fielder, Schuler. It's a 3-for-3 three three day for Caden Les now on a rope of a line drive deep into the hole uh, between Gazeta and Sander. And I'm sure Les now is probably thinking, man, if you just stayed at third base, I would have gotten an RBI out of that. What about Brings up Gunnar Hodgel, who's reached on two errors so far. An E7 and an E6. Les now takes off for second. First pitch is way high, and taking second easily will be the senior Les now. So 12 0 lead for McAllister. It is two down, bottom of the second inning. Les now takes off for third, as this one's going to be swung on and missed for a strike. One. One ball, one strike over here to Gunnar Hodgel. McAllister struck out, though, four times out of their five outs. Again, you can't really complain with the the 12 runs, but McAllister hoping to put the ball in play to get those outs. Coming set, Perry, and the pitch. This one is upstairs. I believe the count goes to two and one. Yeah, it's two balls, one strike, scoreboard over here. I mean, you have it right on the dot. Austin, yeah. right? Two yeah. and one. Yeah, two balls, one strike, two out. Or yeah, two outs. As this one will be fouled straight back, and now the count moves to two balls and two strikes. This a deuce is wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. If you ever watch the video stream, you'll notice that sometimes I'll like press the wrong button. Yeah. Because I, I can't it's hard for me to see the, the well, buttons. Scoreboard. Especially during the day. It's hard for me to see the scoreboard. 2-2, two, two, chopper to the third base side. It's hit off the glove of the backhand of Kazada. He picks it up, tries to throw it over to first, and it's not going to be in time. This is going to go down as an E5. So it's been E6 or E7, E6, E5 for Gunnar Hodgel and his three hit bats. So if it continues to go down the line, you're looking at the second baseman Montez next. That brings up Gandon Mullins. Yeah, if you ever watch the, the video stream, I do that sometimes because it's hard for me to see. And you, you'll you repeat, but I'm dealing with so many things at once. First pitch is the ball as Hodgel makes it to second base. I mean, we appreciate the work that you do. It's not it's not easy to run a, oh, I'm video, not. Run a video board and the camera. The I'm not asking time. for sympathy. I just think it's funny because if you'll notice, sometimes I'll have like it way off. two balls and, and one strike, and it's the opposite. Here's a 1-0 fly ball to center field. Lofton looking up into the blue sky, and it gets over his head. It's going to bounce towards the warning track. One run's going to score. Mullins will coast into second base easy. And that makes the game now a 14-0 ball game. Again, this one was out of the – I mean, Lofton had a bad jump on it. It was out of the reach of him. I think this is going to go down as another extra base hit for Gannon Mullins. We'll see what it's officially ruled as as well. And, yes, they're going to end up calling it a double. Never hit the glove of Lofton, and as he reached all the way back to try to grab it, it was still beyond his reach. As Mullins takes off for third, the pitch gets behind the catcher, Herring, and Mullins will stay put in front of his dad, Justin Mullins, at third base. First pitch to Phillips was a ball. Phillips is one for two. He has an RBI double, and he struck out swinging. So after a nine spot in the first, it's a five spot by the Buffaloes in the second to make the game 14-0. The pitch to Phillips. He's all the way up in the box. This one gets away from the catcher, Herring again, and easily scoring his Mullins as the ball bounces towards the backstop. And it is 15-0. And Memorial obviously struggling today, but there's some uh, Memorial players out there that saying, come on, let's pick up the energy, let's go. They're saying that, you know, obviously not going the game the, the way that we want it to, but we want to show a little bit more energy on the field. It can be kind of tough when you're in a game like this, though. Next pitch, a called strike. What do you have to count as? I have it as one and one, but I thought we had two balls. We, d we did. I thought we did two. Okay, well, then I'm going to go with that if we both think that for now anyway. Yeah, scoreboard, and scoreboard has, is been, has been a little bit behind today. Yeah. Next pitch missed up high, and the count goes to two and one. I thought we did have... That's that's what I'm saying. It, he had a next ball. pitch was swung on and missed for strike two. He had a ball whenever yeah he, when we had the third baseman or the third 
Uh, count count as base. four. It should be four. It's three yes. and two. Thank you. It's three and two. That's what the umpire just signaled. Yeah. Three two pitch to Phillips. It's going to miss outside, and that'll be a walk to Braden Phillips. Only the second walk issued from Hayden Perry, though. Sometimes words are hard. Sometimes words are hard. Sometimes. Buffalo have batted around again. Brings up Aiden Shumway, who started off this inning with a double. And extended his hit streak to eight games in a row. Hottest hitter for the Buffaloes, easily. Phillips takes off for second. This one's going to bounce into the catcher, Herring. And Phillips will coast into scoring position. And Shumway, with runners in scoring position during the seven-game hit streak, 5.45. He's just been a stellar hitter all the way around. As this one will miss well outside as Phillips takes off for third. And the count goes to 2-0 and with a 15-0 McAllister advantage. Shumway, the team leader in most offensive statistics. It's a 2-0. We swung on and dribbled down the first baseline, but foul to move the count to 2-1. and Shumway coming in today batting 438, a 526 on base percentage. Both leads the team there. 533 batting average with runners and scoring, which leads the team. Five first pitch hits, 500 slugging, all leads the team. 88% contact percentage leads the team. And two bunt singles leads the team. Also has the lowest amount of strikeouts on the team. There's going to be a little bit of a mound visit here between head coach Jamal Adams and the infield. We'll take a 30-second break and be right back here on KNED. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. Just a mound visit here. Again, what we have to count at. Uh, right now, we are at two balls and one strike yeah, with I'll, two outs. Only ask that because the scoreboard shows one ball, no strikes over here at Mike D. Field. This one's going to be a line drive towards right center field. This one's going to land. It'll be another RBI, another base hit for Aiden Shumway. He rounds first. We'll make it to second. It's an RBI double for Aiden Shumway. As he is now two for three on the day, and we'll just watch that. Batting average continue to skyrocket that we mentioned before the 30-second break. That brings up Spencer Stinchcomb, who is two for two with two singles, and McAllister now extends our lead to 16-0. First pitch to Stinchcomb. Chases after one. That'll be foul out of play towards the sea of concrete. You know, I came up with that. No, you didn't. We have that argument a lot um, well, if you're a longtime listener. Well, you haven't done baseball broadcasts until about three years ago. Okay. As the 0-1 be popped up, and this one might be playable. No, it's going to get out of play as well. And the count moves to 0-2. I I came up with that term back in my first game I ever called for Eastern Oklahoma State College. I know you didn't. <laughs> I, I came up with it on the board where Wyatt the Cadillac hit uh, is right now. I'm sure. Behind the scenes, I came up with that. Because people don't realize I can talk to Brandon behind the and scenes. in between stuff. So, you know, I came up Here, with the Sea of Concrete. Here's the 0-2 from Perry. It's going to... Skip to the backstop as Shumway easily takes third base, and the count moves to one and two. Still two down here for the Buffs as they have brought up now their 11th batter to the plate. They brought up, uh, I think it was 14 back in the first inning. This is their 11th. Stinchcomb is two for two, trying to keep it rolling. And the one-two. This one's going to bounce, gets to the backstop, but Shumway will stay put. Now two balls, two strikes, two down. And this is game one of a doubleheader. Buffaloes will play the Memorial Chargers directly after this game. District games are supposed to be going 10 runs after five for runner rules, by the way. People are wondering about it. The 2-2. Two -two. Be a hard hit ground ball up the middle. Going to score another run. And now Stinchcomb is three for three on the day. As this rolls towards the center fielder Lofton, Stinchcomb's going to get an extra base hit, and he slides in safely. I think he just wanted to get his jersey a little dirty, even though not really. So we're going to have a pinch runner now coming in for Stinchcomb. Oh, no, he's not. He's just going to throw his uh, elbow pad off. So Stinchcomb now three for three. Number three. Drove in a run to make it 17-0, and it brings it up Jackson Lowerman. Uh, but, no, uh, runner rules are usually ten runs after five innings, but there can be an agreement to where 
you know, if you feel like it's a little bit too far out of hand, is the first pitch misses up and inside for ball one as taking third will be Stinchcomb. For Jackson Lowerman, who is 0 for 1 with an RBI sack fly and a strikeout, because McAllister, the last time that they played Tulsa Memorial in district play, as here's the 1 0, will be popped up towards shallow left center field. It might find a patch of outfield turf, and it does, just past the outstretched glove of Sander, and that'll be an RBI single by Jackson Lowerman. And the Buffalo lead increases to 18-0. The reason why I mentioned it, last time these two teams played three years ago, in game one of those three games, McAllister won 31-0. And they had a 21-run second inning. They didn't go to a third. So, don't know if we're in that kind of situation here. As running over to second will be Lowerman. Swinging and missing is Ethan Watkins for strike one. And it's an 18-0 lead now for the Buffaloes. They put up a nine spot in the first and a nine spot in the second. Nearing the third time through the lineup. Taking off for third is Lowerman. Is this one's going to scoot past the catcher, Herring? And the count goes to one and one on Watkins. But, yeah, the most exciting thing about that, that first win for McAllister was when Ethan Watkins, like I said, back all the way his freshman year, first varsity hit and inside the park, three RBI uh, home run. As this next pitch crosses the letters. And now two strikes on Ethan Watkins. Now, hey, Perry's done his job. I mean, yeah, he's been giving up some hits, but he's only walked two batters, and he struck out four, looking for number five out of a possible six outs. This one's going to bounce, but good job by Herring, the catcher for Memorial, keeping it in front. And the count is now two and two. Yeah, Perry can strike out another batter. Five out of the six outs from the buffs will be strikeouts. He's given his defense chances to work. Defense, again, just has struggled today for the Chargers. 2-2. Two, two. Going to miss upstairs above eye level. And the count is now full to Watkins. Three balls and two strikes. Lowerman at third base. Perry about to deliver the next pitch. This one's going to be a high hit. Fly ball, right center field, way high in the air. Lofton's waiting for it to come down to the ground, and it lands in the turf again. This is going to score another run. We'll make it 19-0. Going over to second base will be Watkins. Again, we'll wait to see what this is officially ruled. But it's a 19-0 lead for McAllister as they put up a 10 spot here in the second. To the plate for the Buffaloes, number five. And that will go down as a double. Can never hit the glove of Lofton. Reached up into the air, could not bring it down. Officially ruled a RBI double for Ethan Watkins as the first pitch is a called strike. Taking third will be Watkins. Clark looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2, reached on an E6 and struck out. 19-0, McAllister lead, still two down. As his next pitch scoots past Herring, the count goes to, I believe, 2-0, right? Yes. 2-0. So for McAllister, again, this is their third time through the lineup after Clark. When you when you asked me if it was two and all, I actually had that wrong. What was it? I thought that first one was a ball. It was. That means it's two and zero. Right, excuse me. Excuse me. A strike. Strike. Yeah, I thought the first one was a strike. That one's a strike as Clark swings and misses for strike one. I thought it went right over the right where it's supposed to go, right in the box, and uh, didn't quite catch what happened after that. Count is two balls and one strike. And the pitch. This one's going to miss well outside. And the count is 3-1 and one here on Clark. In this inning, there's only been one official error on the, uh, on the Chargers. There were seven in the first inning, only one here in the second. Buffalo's piecing up a little bit more base hits. Uh, they've done a lot with two down. They've almost gone all the way through the lineup with just two down. 3-1. Could be a hard hit, ground ball towards the shortstop, and it gets underneath the shortstop Sanders glove. Rounding first will be Clark making his way towards third as it rolled all the way towards the fence. Getting it in quickly will be the left fielder, Schuler. And again, that is a that's a going to be a play where the He's official yeah it. the official scorer is going to end up having to choose what that is. He I think it probably it. he was. He was probably right should go there. down. Yeah, probably should go down as an error. Number two, Caden and they're end up calling a triple on game changer, and that's the official stats for McAllister. Caden Les now comes up once again here in this innings. He takes a big hack, comes up in need for strike one. Buffalo's 
end up taking a 20 to nothing lead. It's the bottom of the second with Clark at third. Les now is three for three with two triples, the second one being an RBI triple and a single. You can tell the way he's swinging. He wants to full send that ball. Full send. 0-1, misses up and inside. The count moves to one ball and one strike. This is the 10th batter in a row for the Buffaloes without an out. After the Clark strikeout, it's gone single, E5, double, walk, double, double, single, double, triple. This one's going to be a hard hit, line drive, left center field. That's a gapper all the way. It's going to roll all the way towards the fence again. Less now rounding first, making his way towards second. He's got another triple in him and an impossible inside of the parker as he will stay put at third base with an RBI triple, his third triple of the day. Another triple for Caden Lesnow. He had six of them last year, leading the team. He has three of them today alone as the Buffaloes take a 21-0 to zero lead in the bottom of the second. Now a 12 spot for the Buffaloes. Gunnar Hodgel trying to get a base knock. First pitch, and across the letters for strike one. Hodgel trying to join the hit parade. He's reached base safely each time. and He's actually hit the ball hard each time, but they've all been... Errors, E7, E6, E5. 0 1. There's his base hit. Left center field. That will drive in Caden Less now. Rolling towards Schuler. It gets past Schuler. Hodge will advance over to second base. He'll take a big turn around second and stay put there. And it's an RBI. I think this is going to go down as a single advance into second on the error. And it brings up Gannon Mullins, who is 3 for 3 on the day, unless we have a. We have a new hitter. Now for the Buffaloes, number nine. It's going to be Max number nine, Max Perfect. Harmon. So, pinch hitter for the Buffaloes, Max Harmon. First pitch to Harmon will be a called strike. Harmon on the season has only had one at bat. He's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. He's got a runner at second and Gunnar Hodgel as the Buffaloes are up now 22 to 0. This one's going to bounce in the turf. Count goes to 1 and 1. Now you can tell some of these uh, some of these batters because they've kind of expanded the box a little bit. Mm -hmm. They have to adjust for that. Not all of them do. As the one one misses wildly outside, it goes to the backstop, but it bounces straight back over to Herring, the catcher. And you can tell that with the way they're you know sort of squaring up their body and stuff. Count is now two one on Max Harmon. Perry, this will be his this will be his hundredth and twelfth pitch. In two innings. 2-1. Two, Pops it up. Foul territory. First baseman, that is Vandegaard, chasing it, and it'll land in front of him. The count moves to 2-2. Two and two. So Harmon will get second life. We'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. This is the 12th straight batter for the Buffaloes since the last out. But this might be Perry's last batter. And they're they're changing the pitcher in the middle of the at bat. He can he can pitch through the at bat. This will be 112, or this that would have been 113. So he has 120 that he can use. So he didn't reach that cap yet. But in the middle of the at bat, even if you were, you're allowed to finish the at bat. But they they're going to change a pitcher in the middle of the at bat with the count two and two with two down. Score is 22-0. We'll have a. Call the bullpen and be back here in just a moment on KNED. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member of the IC. Equal housing lender. Okay! Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. 
Spin Madness is here. So brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots. Sink one and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot. Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. We have our first call at the bullpen. As McAllister's up 22 to zero in the bottom of the second inning, they put up a 13 spot so far, and in the middle of the at bat, we're having a pitching change. The count is going to be two balls, two strikes, two outs. This is called the bullpen, brought to you by Jet Tire Service. They have been serving Pittsburgh County and beyond since 1962. They offer 18 major tire brands. So Max Harmon is up at the plate now, pitching for the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. It is number five, Aiden Sander. Sander from the shortstop position to the mound. Uh, Perry, Hayden Perry goes from the mound over to shortstop. And th that was, again, he had eight more pitches to work with according to McAllister's game changer. So he could have finished the at-bat. And even if he did cross the 120 pitch mark, he could still have finished the at-bat because you're allowed to finish that at-bat once you get to the your max count. But they pulled him with 112 pitches. And that brings up uh, Aiden Sander now to the mound for the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. There's a runner at second base for the Buffaloes. That is Gunnar Hodgel, Max Harmon, with a count two and two on him with two down. We'll dig it back into the box to face the new pitcher, Sander, for the first time. Sander looks back towards second. Uh, we're waiting for the home plate umpire, and now it looks like he's ready. He's having to get his big league chew in place. <laughs> Best bubble gum for baseball players ever. 2-2 two, two misses outside to move the count to three balls and two strikes. What's your favorite flavor of big league chew? I like the classic, man. I'm a sour like. apple. It's not that it's bad, but I just, I'm just i not a real like big fan apple? of the sour apple. I did trust strawberry yesterday. The whole reason why I bring it up in the first place. 3-2. This one's going to bounce, and Harmon's going to take a walk. Runners at first and second for the Buffaloes. And that'll bring up Braden Phillips. Phillips is one for two. He's had an RBI double, struck out, and walked. But, um, yeah, I, I've this is now an, it's not even an advertisement. This is just going to make everyone want Big League Chew now. Go to their nearest department store and find their favorite flavor of Big League Chew bubble gum. We had a guy I was talking about with, and he was like, it's just straight sugar. First pitch to Phillips is going to be fouled back for strike one. I was like, yeah, it's bubble gum. 22-0 the score. Runners at first and second. Bottom of the second inning. For Phillips, this is his... Uh, this will complete the second full time through the lineup for the Buffaloes. As this next pitch crosses the letters. And the count moves to 0-2. This, this is the 18th batter for the Buffaloes now. In this second inning. Sander comes set. And the 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike three. And that will end the bottom of the second inning, but not before McAllister puts up 13 runs as they now lead 22-0 heading to the top of the third. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on K. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George Knight Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. One. Go Buffs! Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare. Your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. 
Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare. Your home comfort, home run. License number 001 44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister. From the team at Reagan Auto, thanks for your business. We have a ton of defensive changes here with the Buffaloes as Caden Lesnar comes in for his third inning of work. He struck out five uh, Tulsa Memorial Charger batters. It will be the 7-8-9 batters up for the Tulsa Memorial Chargers, starting off with the left fielder, number 13, Devin Schuler. So let's look at all the changes. We have Jackson Morgan at first base and for Shumway. Stinchcomb has moved from second over to third. Uh, at second base now is Max Harmon. Hodgell, I believe, still at shortstop for the Buffaloes. Brayden Phillips still behind home plate. Of course, Les now still on the mound. So here's the windup in the first pitch of the third inning to Devin Schuler, and it will be missing for ball one. Isaiah Timmons now in left field. We have Jaden Chaney in center field for the Buffaloes, and in right field, Logan Cease for McAllister. Up 22-0 as we are now in the top of the third inning. Next pitch. Called strike one on a fastball. Count moves to one ball and one strike. To Devin Schuler, left fielder number 13. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swings and misses for strike two, and the count moves to one ball and two strikes. Les now looking for his sixth K of the day. The windup and the one-two. It's going to be fouled off of Phillips. And staying alive here will be Schuler. Count one ball, two strikes. And we do have one more game after this one. It was supposed to begin at 5.30. Don't know if we're going to go the full five innings in this first game. It might just be one time through the lineup for the Chargers. Again, you're supposed to go uh, – at least five innings in district play, but like we said, in games that have gotten, that can get out of hand, that's not always the case. Usually that's going to be decided upon is here comes the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three on the high heater. Sit him down, throw it around. That's now four consecutive strikeouts for Caden Lesnow, and it's one down in the top of the third inning. That's, a, that's usually a discussion that's made between the two head coaches deciding if they do want to call it earlier than the five innings. But it's, it's been known to happen. Once they go through the thing, I'll go down there. I'll talk to the coach and stuff and see what's going on. I think we'll know. <laughs> first pitch to Jonah Vandegaard. It's a good curveball in there for strike one at the knees. To the first baseman, number six again, Jonah Vandegaard. One down, top of the third. Buffalo's up 22-0. Less now, the 0-1. Swung on and missed for strike two. Less now looking for his fifth consecutive strikeout. Here's the windup and the 0-2 pitch. This one's going to skip in. Count moves to one ball and two strikes here on Vandegaard. There had been one charger to reach base, and it was Hayden Perry with a walk. And you know, he was thrown out at second. A certain story keeps coming to mind. And this actually has something to do with broadcast, but I think it was last year. So here comes the 1-2. Curve ball, swing and a miss for strike three. Another strikeout from Caden Lesnow. And now there's two down in the top of the third inning. That brings up Kamari and Whit Whitaker. But I believe it was last year, and we like to record the games, you know, and keep them kind of in a backlog. Oh, and goodness. I think I know where you're going You had with told this. me to record a game, and unfortunately I forgot. And he said, Austin, we'll never have, you know, a game like that again. And then the next, the exact next game <laughs> was almost exactly like that first one. For I don't want to say it because if I say it, there's something you know, going on right now, too. Yeah, well, not that, but you First know. pitch lands for a ball, by the way, to Whitaker. The announcer jinx and all that. I get you. Well, I guess we can mention it if it does happen here. As the 1 0 oh. fills the zone, they'll move the count to one ball and one strike. Two down on the top of the third inning. Buffalo's put up a <clears throat> nine spot in the first and then a 13 spot in the second. As the 1 1 is going to be swung on a miss, now the strike two. Let's now. Attempting for his sixth consecutive strikeout. The two-strike pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. Got him on the heater. And that will end the top of the first inning. Buffalo's leading 22-0. to zero. And that, that's, they're going to call that ball game. So that's going to be ball game after the 
first one I heard that from the home plate umpire. Uh, at the end of the, that will be a ball game after three innings. It gets over after the top of the third. So Buffalo's win 22 to zero. That is a no hitter for Caden Less now. That is what he was talking about. We, uh, Trent Boatwright threw a no hitter against Shawnee. Didn't yeah. record the broadcast. Yeah, I missed that one. McAllister had a combined no hitter against Ada the very next day. But which is, I mean, just as good. And you know, Brandon was like, "Oh, it's it's never gonna happen. Well, it doesn't ever happen like that." The Buffaloes do get a no hitter today. Caden Less now completes the no no, facing the minimum nine batters, and after three innings of play. McAllister wins 22-0. We'll take a short break, and then we'll have our post-game stats before you get ready for game two. I just have to tally these up real quick, and then we'll be back to play. Uh, but, again, 22 nothing our score. Ladies and gentlemen, Buffalo fans far and wide, grab that brush and paint that win column black and gold. We'll be back shortly here on k Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Welcome back to Mike Deke Field in McAllister, Oklahoma. It's about time for our post-game stats before we get ready for game two. Post-game stats brought to you by Big V Feed Center in McAllister, Hedco Farm and Ranch in Kiowa, and Shakota Wholesale Feed Company in Shakota for your spring feeding program needs. McAllister wins 22-0 over Tulsa Memorial in two and a third inning, or two and a half innings, uh, as they called it after the top of the third. Again, 22-0, no hitter for Caden Lesnow. Uh, Tulsa Memorial, every batter struck out to Caden Lesnow with the exception of Hayden Perry. Perry walked, but then he was thrown out at second base. Uh, Hayden Perry also struck out four McAllister batters. Uh, Aiden Sander came in and struck out one as well, so five out of the six McAllister outs were strikeouts. There were only three walks issued by the Chargers, but there were nine errors by the Chargers in two innings on defense. McAllister improves to eight and four on the year. This is what it looked like one through nine. Caden Lesnow went four for four with two RBIs, including three triples. Gunnar Hodgel went one for four with an RBI. Gannon Mullins went three for three with two RBIs. Max Harmon came in and pitched it for him and walked. Braden Phillips went one for three with an RBI double. Aiden Shumway went two for three with an RBI double. Spencer Stinchcomb went three for three with an RBI. Jackson Lyberman one for two with two RBIs. Ethan Watkins one for two with an RBI. And Jordan Clark with one for three with an RBI. Again, a uh, three inning no hitter for Caden Lesnow. He struck out eight of his nine outs. There were 11 hits total by McAllister, only one walk by Lesnow. No McAllister errors uh, defensively. So we're about to get ready for game number two. I'm going to go get lineups and we'll. Uh, have you guys stand by, but again, McAllister takes game one, 22-0, looking to get the sweep over the Tulsa Memorial Chargers and improve to 9-4 and four on the year. We'll take a quick break. If you're listening on radio, then you can enjoy the uh, classic country music that Wyatt the Cadillac Kid back on the k and studios on Electric Avenue has in store for you. Uh, but on the video stream, we'll just leave you with a blank screen for a little bit. Again, we'll be back shortly with game two here on k and
Welcome back to Mike Deakfield in McAllister, Oklahoma. About ready for game two of today's district doubleheader between the McAllister Buffaloes and the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. I'm your voice of the Buffaloes, Brandon Green, alongside Austin Wheat. He's going to be uh, not only handling the broadcast for us today uh, visually on YouTube, but also doing some commentary here and there as well. It was a blowout win from the McAllister Buffaloes. Quite point, frankly, they ended up winning 22 nothing over the Tulsa Memorial Chargers in two and a half innings. They called it after the top of the third inning. McAllister put up a nine spot in the first and then 13th spot in the second for their 22 nothing win. This is game two. McAllister now improved to eight and four on the season and five and zero in district play. Tulsa Memorial fell to zero and four all their games in district play. Again, uh, weather still not a cloud in the sky. Wind is still uh, slightly blown, maybe not as hard as it was in the first game to begin the game, but about eight miles per hour blown out towards the right field foul pole. Again, not a single cloud in the sky with the, uh, what does it look like here? It looks like the low today by the end of the game, it won't dip any lower than 48 degrees. Again, uh, the McAllister Buffaloes right now are uh, about to take the field. They're going to be the home team once again for Game 2 as this is the doubleheader. Uh, They're taking the field as we speak. So let's go ahead and look at our starting lineup, starting off with the head coach of the Tulsa Memorial Chargers, Jamal James. One through nine for them looks like this. Leading it off, the pitcher, number five, Aiden Sander. Batting second, the shortstop, number six, Hayden Perry. Batting third, the catcher, number 26, Amon Herring. Batting cleanup, the second baseman, number four, Ayer Montez. Batting fifth, the third baseman, number 19, Junior Cazada. Batting sixth, the center fielder, number eight, Malik Lofton. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number 12, Pablo Garcia. Batting eighth, the first baseman, number six, Jonah Vandegaard. And batting ninth, the right fielder, number nine, Ronte Stewart. For the McAllister Buffaloes, like I mentioned, eight and four on the year, a perfect five and zero in district play, led by head coach Justin Mullins. One through nine looks like this. Leading it off, the shortstop number two, Caden Lusnow. Batting second, the third baseman number eleven, Gunnar Hodgel. Batting third and pitching today, number six, Gannon Mullins. Batting cleanup, the catcher number eight, Braden Phillips. Batting fifth, the first baseman number twenty-one, Aiden Shumway. Batting sixth, the second baseman number one, Spencer Stinchcomb. Batting seventh, playing left field number three, Jackson Lowerman. Batting 8th, playing center field, number 10, Ethan Watkins. And riding out the starting line for the Buffaloes, playing right field, number 4, Jaden Chaney. So one more time around the diamond as the Buffaloes again have taken the field for those on the radio wearing their gold on gold jerseys, our alternative jerseys. They wore those gold uh, pants for the first time six days ago in Arizona against Sunrise Mountain. Again, gold on gold jerseys with the black numerals on the front and back and black buffs across the chest. They're also wearing their black caps, gold bills with the gold interlocking MB on the front. For Tulsa Memorial, wearing their blue jerseys, red accents, and pinstripe bottoms as well as their blue caps. Uh, so again, around the defense for McAllister, Shumway at first, Stinchcomb at second, Luss now at short, Hodgel at third, in the outfield, Lowerman in left, Watkins in center, Chaney in right, in the battery for the buffs, behind home plate, Brayton Phillips, and on the mound, Gannon Mullins, who is 1-1 one one on the year, 13 innings pitched, 8.08 ERA, 16 strikeouts to 20 walks, and a 217 batting average against him. We're about to have your first pitch brought to you by Big V Feed Center. See Big V Feed Center in McAllister, Hadco Farm and Ranch in Kiowa, and Shakota Wholesale Feed Company in Shakota for your spring feeding program needs. Austin, as we're about to get started, any uh, anything you want to add? Uh, no, not really. That's all we needed. Let's get it going. <laughs> <laughs> Very astute observation there. That broadcasting school really paying off for you. Yeah, I didn't go to it. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess technically I did. I didn't finish. <laughs> so Mullins is getting ready. Uh, the throwdown has been made to second base. We're now just waiting on uh, Aiden Sander to dig into the box. Uh, and hopefully the umpire is trying to tell Tulsa Memorial that we need a batter. Sander... Again, every Charger batter struck out with the exception of one, Hayden Perry, who is going to be batting second today for the Chargers. He drew a walk. So Mullins is ready. Sander is ready. Here's the first pitch of the second game, and it's going to be high with the fastball for ball one as it's baseball time here in the heartland. So one ball, no strikes here to Aiden Sander. So here's the windup from Mullins and the 1-0 pitch. This one's back to the zone with the fastball. Count moves to even at one ball and one strike. So here's the windup from Mullins and the 1-1 pitch. This one's going to cross the letters, and the count quickly goes to 1-2 and two here for Gannon Mullins. And Sander was starting to make his way off the field. He thought that was strike three, but he'll dig it back into the box with the count 1-2. The windup and the pitch. 
This one is right across the letters for strike three. Got him with a heater. Got him looking backwards K there to Aiden Sander. That is one down here in the top of the first inning. Good start for the senior, Gandon Mullins. As it brings up Hayden Perry, the only charger to reach base against the Buffaloes in game one. He was thrown out at second base, trying to steal. First pitch to Perry. Going to be fouled out of play. Over towards the Memorial dugout that resides along the first base line. McAllister, as always, in the third base dugout. With an awesome new door, shall I say. I'll try to explain it for those that really can't see it as the 0-1. We'll catch the outside corner, and that quickly moves the count to 0-2 here from Mullins to the batter, Hayden Perry. Because I don't remember that being here uh, before spring break, by the way. Here's the, the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. Got him on the curveball and snagging it as Phillips behind home plate as it's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Gannon Mullins to start off his game. But, yeah, it's a, it's a covered door, <coughs> and it's got the – Classic interlocking MB, the original logo okay. from the, well, original alternative logo from the Milwaukee Brewers, but it's been the McAllister Baseball logo for years. It's got McAllister Baseball on the top of it, and at the very bottom of the door, it says Beast from the East. As the first pitch will miss up high to Amon Herring for ball one. And, of course, for a good 15-year span, 15 consecutive state tournament appearances for the McAllister Buffalo baseball team. That is what earned them the name Beast from the East. As the next pitch will be a fastball, missing up high, but swinging after it was Herring for strike one. Count moves to one ball, one strike. Here's the wind up and the 1-1 one, one pitch. This one's going to miss down low by the ankles, and the count moves to two balls and one strike here on Amon Herring. Wind up in the 2-1. Inside corner just missing. The count moves to three and one. Something a little bit different. I know that uh, Mullins ended up playing, what was it, third base in the previous game. He still has his left wrist taped, which is fine as long as it's not white. As the three one catches the outside corner, moves the count to four, three balls and two strikes. I think this might be the first time he's had tape on his wrist while he's been pitching this season. So here comes the three two. It's going to be chopped down the third base side, and it's going to roll foul. And we'll do it again at 3-2. and two. Yeah, I think his first three appearances of the season, he's pitched without you know anything on his wrist. But after playing third base in the first game, just decided to keep that black tape on that left wrist. Well, about to do the payoff again here to the righty, Amon Herring. The windup and the delivery. It's going to be a ground ball towards the shortstop. Less now. He fields it cleanly, fires over to first base, and in time for out number three. So it's a three-up, three-down inning for Gannon Mullins to start us off here. As we head to the bottom of the first, you're listening to McAllister Baseball here on K. Okay! Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here, so brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George Night Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! 
We head to the bottom of the first inning. The Buffaloes getting their first time up to the plate. Gannon Mullins with a good 1-2-3 inning uh, pitching and defensively for the Buffaloes, ending it on a 6-3 ground out from Amon Herring. It'll be Caden Lust now, Gunnar Hodgel, and Gannon Mullins to get it started for the Buffaloes here in Game 2. Again, McAllister just now joining us. One Game 1, 22-0 behind a 9 spot in the first and then a 13 spot in the second. Didn't have the bat in the third. But it'll be Lust now leading us off here as uh, he's going to see his batting average increase greatly as he now has hits in eight out of his last nine. He batted 214 during the Arizona Best of the West Classic, uh, but he was four for four in the previous game with three triples. Again, the first one was not a total inside the park home run on an errant throw back into the infield. That's what allowed him to score. So uh, he is, again, four for four with two RBIs in the today so far. This is his first at bat of game two. As the first pitch misses high from the Pitcher Aiden Sander to the catcher Amon Herring with Lust now up at the dish. Around the diamond for the Chargers, Vandegaard at first, Montez at second, Perry at short, Cazada at third, Garcia in left, Lofton in center, and Stewart in right. As Sander deals the 1-0 pitch. This one's going to miss high and inside as well to move the count to 2-0. The battery for the Chargers in game two is Herring behind the plate and Sander on the mound. Here's the 2-0 from Sander. This one's going to be popped up first baseline. This one's going to land either on, yeah, on top of the press box. It bounced off of the press box and straight into the glove of the catcher. Herring, that does not mean that that is an out. The count is 2-1. Can win not blowing as hard as it was in the first game. A slight breeze out to still the right field foul pole. Shaking off the catcher a couple of times to Sander. Now likes to be seized. Comes set. Waits and delivers the 2-1. This one's going to miss up high. And the count moves to 3-1 and one as it's, again, just 7 miles per hour. Again, it's supposed to be riding about 8 miles per hour uh, for the majority of the afternoon. We've had some gusts that have gotten into, like, the 15-mile-per-hour range. But thank you, Derek, for that. Count is 3-1. Three balls, one strike. Hitters count here for less now. As Sander deals. This one's going to miss way too high, and it's going to be a five-pitch walk to Caden Less now. And that brings up Gunnar Hodgel. Hodgel just was a little bit unlucky. Actually hit the ball pretty hard his first two at-bats, but those were legitimate errors. So even though he reached base every single time in the previous game, he only went one for four with an RBI. So Less now is now at first base with a tie 0-0 game in the bottom of the first. Nobody out. Les now immediately takes off for second. The team leader in steals gets another one as the first pitch misses down low and outside for ball one. I don't know how many stolen bases Les now had in the in the first game. I think he had – well, I don't think he really actually had that many because he had three triples. There's not really anywhere else you can go unless you try to steal home and he didn't do that. Yeah, nobody tried to really steal home. As the throw gets into the outfield on a pickoff attempt, Les now is going to take third here. That is going to be the first error of this game on the Chargers. I'll go down as an E1. Again, Chargers had nine in the previous game. But they only gave up three free passes. There was only three walks the entire time. Credit to Hayden Perry again. He threw a lot of pitches. He threw 112, but only had two walks against him. 1-0 is going to skip in, and I'll move the count to 2-0. And five out of the six outs from Hayden Perry in game one, strikeouts. So here comes the 2-0. It's going to miss low and outside Hodgel, and the count moves to 3-0. With Lust now now at third base. Hodgel comes into today, uh, not this game, but today, batting 382. As the 3 0 is going to run in, and I think it nearly hit him, but it just runs into the catcher, Herring, and that'll be back to back walks here from A uh, Aiden Sander. Brings up the pitcher number six, Gannon Mullins, who had a stellar game one, went three for three with two RBIs, including two doubles. He has six extra base hits, which is tied for the team lead with Caden Lust now. First and third, nobody out. Hodgel takes off for second. First pitch, crossing the letter, strike one on the high fastball. And now runners at second and third here for Mullins, who again came into today batting 250 with runners in scoring position. And nine RBIs as the 0-1 bounces off of Herring. But he keeps it in front, and the count moves to one ball and one strike as it was low with the pitch. And runners at second and third. 
for the Buffaloes, looking to take their first lead. Now after game one, Mullins with 11 RBIs. As here's the 1-1. This one misses way too high. And that'll be ball two. Now despite the 22 runs scored by the Buffaloes, they didn't have the bases loaded once. Not a single bases loaded alert. As a 2-1 bounces into the turf, staying put is less now, and the count will move to 3-1. and one. Hitters count here for Mullins, the only batter so far for the Buffaloes this season with a home run, and he has two of them, both at this park, both hit two weeks to the day, two weeks ago to the day. 3-1. He'll watch this one miss up high, and it's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back walks to begin the bottom of the first for the McAllister offense against Memorial. Brings up the catcher, number eight, Braden Phillips. Bases loaded alert brought to you by Pop's Kettle Corn. Choose your flavor of kettle corn and try their freshly made pork rinds at Pop's Kettle Corn in Old Town. Jordan Clark will be the courtesy runner for Gannon Mullins. Braden Phillips went one for three with an RBI double in his first at bat. First pitch that he sees is going to miss up high. Really right now, Sanders just missing high, and he's trying to overcorrect, and he misses down on the turf, and he's trying to find that happy medium right now. Phillips will drive this one deep over to left field, carrying towards the left fielder Garcia. He's still backing up. He does make the catch. Tagging up will be less now, and this will be a sack fly. Now tagging up from second base will be Hodgels. This one's going to be an E6. Now Clark makes his way towards second. It's the second baseman was not in his right spot. So it's going to go down as a sack fly RBI for Braden Phillips. And it gives the Buffaloes a 1-0 lead. But again, an E6 led to runners advancing to second and third. So it's a 1-0 Buffalo lead, but one down here for the Chargers. Brings up Aiden Shumway on the catch from the left fielder Garcia. First pitch misses again up high and inside for ball one. For Phillips, that was RBI number nine on the year. Sander will let this one be a ground ball right side. Aiden Shumway with another base hit. It's going to score one. They're going to hold up Clark at third base. It's an RBI single for Aiden Shumway, and that extends his hit streak to nine games in a row. Aiden Shumway, and that's a great piece of hitting there, too. He saw an outside fastball, waited on it, let the ball travel, kept his hands inside, barreled it up, and split the right side of the infield, leading to another Run score for the Buffaloes. The first pitch to Stinchko misses up stairs for ball one. Runners at first and third, two nothing Buffalo lead with one down in the bottom of the first for Stinchko, who went three for three with an RBI double in his final at bat. Great jump by Shumway. Here's the pitch. This one's going to be a called strike, and now runners at second and third for Stinchko as Shumway just strides into the second base bag. Clark in front of him. 1-1 one, one pitch. This one's going to sail too high, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. Stinchcomb coming into today's doubleheader. Third on the team in batting average at 290 with a 405 on base percentage. 2-1. Going to get the high strike call, and the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Stinchcomb on the season. Seven out of his nine hits with runners in scoring. He's got runners at second and third right now. Batting 467 with runners in scoring. That's really good, and that's still not even best on the team. That belongs again to Aiden Shumway. 2-2. Two -two. As he gets out of the way here, but this is going to be a balk. Before he got out of the way, there's a balk first by the, by the pitcher. That's going to allow a run to score. Clark crosses home plate, makes the score now 3-0. And we are doing, we're going to be doing three runs or three outs here. So McAllister is going to take the field. We're doing three runs or three outs in this one. So McAllister scores their three runs. We head to the top of the second inning. As, again, the Buffaloes leading by three here on KNED. Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 0014 
Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful day for baseball. Joining me is Sweet Weed here. No, I'm kidding. It's yeah, and this is BG Ryan. right over to I am BG, yeah. yeah. hi. I may as well be. I did one of your segments earlier for you during your show. <laughs> yeah, subtle plug. I do have a midday <laughs> show on K101.3 if you ever want to tune into it. Uh, BG's Lunchbox, we call it. Uh, but, yeah, this is Brandon Green along with Austin Wheat to my left. Again, subtle plug. You can catch his afternoon show. He's got two till six That's on the right. same station. That's right. And welcome back to the show. No, Looks no, like no, we're no, at the no, top. It's not a show. It's a game. No, same thing. <laughs> it seems to wind up the first pitch it's from Gannon Mullins. Is going to be a called strike at the letters to Yahir Montez as the Buffaloes lead 3 0 as we head to the top of the second inning. Again, just now leading off the top of the second is the cleanup hitter Montez. It's the show. Mullins will deliver a fastball, a swing and a miss from Montez, makes the count 0 2. Again, the rules today it's going to be three runs or three outs. That is the rule for this varsity game. As here's a swing and a miss on the heater from Gannon Mullins, and that's his third strikeout. <coughs> Sit him down, throw it around. One down here in the top of the second inning brings up Junior Cazada. Again, third baseman number 19 played third base in the previous game, too. Mullins looking to keep it rolling. First pitch, curveball pops it up towards the foul territory right side. This one's going to get out of play, I think, and that'll be strike one. But. Yeah, three runs or three outs. So what that means is it's pretty much exactly as it sounds. Uh, each team will play in the inning until they get three outs or they score three runs. Now, uh, is so it three th runs in a row or is it just three runs in general? Well, three runs in that half inning. So like if you. the Chargers were to score three runs here in the top of the second, they, they'd have to come in. 1-1. Yeah. One, one. Fastball, big cut, but blew it right by Gazada for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Looking for his fourth strikeout already. Mullins. The one, two. Oh, hit him in the head. Ooh. Seems like he's all right. He went with the curveball and then ducking for Kever uh, was Kazada. And when he ducked, he ducked Nobody into the ball. It hit him in the ear hole of the, of the helmet. But that is why we're not like the 20s anymore and we don't play with just <laughs> with hats. Thank goodness for the helmets, right? That would be bleeding of the ear, easy, and a concussion. Back in my day, we just dealt with the concussion scene. <laughs> oh, are we bringing back the old-time talk? <laughs> oh, yeah. That brings up Malik Lofton. As again, a runner at first with one down, and the first pitch strike to Lofton. These youngins <laughs> are too soft, see? Yeah, back in my day, we took a heater to the chin. I broke about six teeth in my day. See my wooden teeth? Teeth? I couldn't even I'm, afford I, I'm, teeth, not, I'm not even doing an old-time accent anymore. <laughs> I'm going all Texan. <laughs> Bad Texan accent. The 0-1 will miss down low by the ankles for ball one. If anyone is wondering what we're doing, Austin said that we should start talking like the old 40s bring baseball back. broadcasters and bring, bring it back. It back. Yeah. That's what we said back in game one. One ball, one strike, one out to Malik Lofton. So one's across the board while Kazada's at first base. So here's the next pitch. It's going to be down by the ankles. And the count goes to 2-1. and one. With the wind blowing in the outfield, it is playing shallow today. So here's the 2-1 from Mullins. This one misses low and outside. The count runs three balls, one strike to Lofton. Lofton batted out of the two-hole in the previous game, now down to the six. Still playing center field today for the Chargers. 3-1 from Mullins. And this was going to walk him down by the ankle, so... Back-to-back -back free passes puts runners at first and second, and this is what McAllister's wanting to work on here. I mentioned it before the game began that in the first two games where McAllister won them, 6 nothing and 6-5, they had 13 strikeouts to five walks, and a big reason, obviously, for the success, he didn't give up a lot of free passes. The last two games where they lost, um, giving up double-digit runs in both the games, seven strikeouts to 20 free passes. As the first pitch will be checked out, but a little bit too out in front. Either way, it's going to be a strike to Pablo Garcia. 
And the count is 0-1. Runners at first and second with one down top of the second inning. Buffalo's lead 3-0. The pitch from Mullins. This one's going to be, again, checked out after, but still doesn't matter. It's still called strike to Garcia. Count is now 0-2. So Mullins trying to bounce back with a three-pitch strikeout. Can he get it here? The 0-2. Yes, he can. Swing and a miss for strike three. And that'll be out number two. Brings up Jonah Vandegaard, the first baseman, number six. So Vandegaard out of the eight hole. That's where he was in the previous game, too. Again, only one time through the lineup for the Chargers in the first game. Runners at first and second, two down, three nothing. McAllister lead tying run on uh, inside the batter's box as the first pitch to the righty Vandegaard sails up too high for ball one. One zero the count and the pitch. This one's going to sail too high too for ball two. So again, McAllister over the last now what is it? Uh, this will be the last, this will be four games now for McAllister. In their four games, they have given up. I believe that's twenty three free passes. As we're getting close to twenty four, as this one misses down by the ankles to move the count to three zero. In comparison, McAllister's opponents, including Tulsa Memorial, in the second game has given up only nine free passes in their last four games. So it's almost 24-9 to nine as the next pitch is going to cross the knees for strike one to move the count to three balls and one strike. And that is where the Buffaloes are kind of beating themselves, just too many free passes. And they're wanting to work on that here before they get into a big-time stretch in April as here's another good bounce-back pitch from Mullins to get to the count at three and two. Can he work all the way back from 3-0 to a strikeout? It's either bases loaded or an out here possibly for Mullins. 3-2. And this will miss down low and it will load the bases. For Ronte Stewart, the right fielder. Now batting the right fielder. And you look at where McAllister has had their success over the last couple of seasons. Um, so far this season, they're averaging six and a half free passes per game. Now last year, they averaged four and a half. Year before that, 4.4. .4. The last time that the Buffaloes had more free passes than strikeouts was in 2021, as the first pitch called strike to Ronte Stewart. But that was that wasn't very much of a difference. That was 170 free passes to 160 strikeouts. As the 0-1 called strike two at the letters, and Mullins trying to leave him loaded. The pitch. Strike three, got him. Good morning, good afternoon, good night with the fastballs from Gannon Mullins, and that leaves the bases loaded for the Tulsa Memorial Chargers as he registers another strikeout, that time a backwards K, and the Buffaloes maintain a 3-0 lead as it's a great bounce back, uh, bounce back strikeout there for Gannon Mullins as we head to the home half of the second. Buffaloes leading 3-0 here on K. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong. Secure and ready to loan. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Okay! Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. 
We now head to the home half of the second inning. The Buffaloes lead 3-0. Again, a reminder, as we had a cough into the mic from Sorry, <laughs> from Sorry I was Wheat. trying not to do that. And it, this is know. Brandon Green along with Austin Weed again. 3 nothing is our score, but we're again doing three runs or three outs each inning. So, again, a reminder for those that don't know what that is, you either score three runs or you get out three times, and that is how you progress the next half inning. Spencer Stinch come up at the plate. His first pitch is going to be a grounder over towards his uh, head coach, Justin Mullins, over in the third base Incredible. coaching box. Did you see he grabbed that with his bare hands? Yeah, the form could have been a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, say, the form could have been better, say. Count Back on in one. my day, we used to bust knuckles. <laughs> as the old one's going to be a high hit fly ball, deep left field, carrying towards Garcia as he makes another catch out in left field. And that'll be out number one. And Buffalo's saw the Chargers kind of struggle to get the outs in the field in the previous game, but that is now... Well, the two outs that have been recorded by the Chargers in this game have both been fly outs to the left fielder Garcia, who did not start in the first game. So that will lead up to Jackson Lowerman, left fielder number three. <clears throat> first pitch outside corner, strike one to Lowerman. Lowerman went one for two with two RBIs, one on a sack fly, and then a bloop single over into left center field. Also struck out in between. So here's the 0-1. This one's going to be swung on and missed for strike two as he chases the high one. And the count will go to 0-2 on Lowerman. Trying to get back-to-back -back outs here at the Chargers as this will be a line drive center field coming in. And going over the head of Lofton, this could be an inside of the parker for Lowerman. He rounds first, going towards second. Now finally grabbing it is Lofton in center field. Going to third is Lowerman. And he will slam on the brakes at third base. And it will be a triple for Jackson Lowerman. As it, that's why they teach you, though, first step should be back when you're in the outfield. Lofton thought he had a good beat on it, drove himself towards the middle of the outfield, but then realized as the ball was starting to continue to travel his way, he made a mistake, and it sailed over his head, and he leaped, but it was too high for him. And that leads to a triple by Lowerman. Brings up Ethan Watkins. First pitch to Watkins. Be a fastball missing eye level for ball one. Incredible. <laughs> I'm at the Sunday school, get that boy a... Uh, <laughs> at the Sunday school? Get yeah, the, I'm get that boy. Get that I was going to say a, a uh, root beer float, but <laughs> at starting the, to run out of old Tommy... As this one's popped up the chute, catcher Herring goes after it in foul territory, and this one will land in foul territory off the McAllister logo. And second life here for Watkins at the count. One ball, one strike. I was about to say, Sunday school, give, the, the, give that boy a Bible, see? Well, I was going <laughs> to say. What else are you going to give him in Sunday school? <laughs> Ruby floats. Did, they, did you get Ruby floats in Sunday school? Y'all didn't? No. I didn't either. The one 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 well, Missed behind the catcher, Herring, but staying put over at third will be uh, Lowerman, and the count is now 2-1. Yeah, in fact, we weren't allowed to have any kind of – we still aren't allowed to have any kind of food or drink, really, inside Fine, the – Fine, Brandon. I guess we won't do the old time – we won't bring them back. We won't be the pioneers to bring <laughs> back the old time uh, uh, radio broadcast from the 40s. Yeah, radio broadcast voice. 2-1 is going to bounce past Herring. Again, staying put is Lowerman, and the count is 3-1. Yeah, and truly, I encourage people to go back and listen to, and you could be surprised how many classic baseball games there are on the radio. Uh, go to YouTube, type in classic baseball games on the radio, and you'll be able to find a bunch of them. Three ones going to miss up high, and the leader in walks draws another one. Ethan Watkins, I don't know what it is with Ethan Watkins, but that is now his, make that his 13th walk of the year, his 16th free pass given up. Or not given up, but given to him. Runners up the corners for Jaden Chaney as he swings at a pitch that was low for strike one. There's one down. Buffaloes are leading 3-0 in the bottom of the second. Have not scored in the second inning yet. Watkins will take off for a second. As this pitch sails too high, leaping and grabbing it to catch your herring to move the count to one ball and one strike. But I encourage you to do it. Actually, a uh, fun fact about myself here, just real quickly, to be able to get ready for baseball games, if I'm going on the road somewhere, uh, if I'm going on the road somewhere, about for half of my drive, I'll actually put on one of those games so I can kind of listen to Vin Scully and some of the old uh, classics that were guys were on the radio. I'll see kind of how they called some stuff. And um, as the 1-1 one, one will miss upstairs for ball two. And try to see kind of how they would say certain situations, and uh, it kind of gets me into the zone a little bit before so you, I do some sports. So you steal. You steal I don't steal, but I just see how they would – how they would go about a certain play is the 2-1 is going to bounce 
and make the count in three balls and one strike. But everyone has their like pregame warm ups. You know, you talk about athletes. That's kind of mine. I like to listen to I'm, old class. I know I like to listen to uh, listen to old classic radio broadcasts, and then for the second half of my drive, I actually listen to pump up music. Just so everyone knows, no, I am I am messing with with BG. As the three one misses outside, now load the bases as Janey, uh, Jaden Chaney draws the walk. And it brings up the top of the order with the bases loaded for Caden Lust now. This base is loaded alert brought to you by Pop's, uh, excuse me, yes, Pop's Kettle Corn. Choose your flavor of kettle corn or try their freshly made pork rinds at Pop's Kettle Corn in Old Town. So Lust now with the bases loaded, walked his first plate appearance in this game. On the day, he is four for four with two RBIs. Can expand his day even more here. As this one nearly hits him. Gets out of the way of it for ball one. One down for the Buffaloes. They have not scored yet in the bottom of the second. Let's not try to change that. The pitch from Sander. Line drive, left field, coming in and hopping in front of Garcia. That'll score a run. It'll be an RBI single here for Caden Lust now. His great day continues. He is now 5-for-5 five five with three RBIs in two games. So he came into today batting 244. Has a lot of hits, like we mentioned. Now he's got hits in, what is it, nine out of his last ten games. But a lot of them before these two games were just one hit a game. But now he's getting those multi-hits. He's going to see his batting average skyrocket. Came in today at 244. Can't really wait to see what that goes up to when this game is concluded. As the first pitch to Gunnar Hodgel bounces into the backstop, and that'll be ball one. Hodgel drew a walk his first time up, uh, but in the previous game, Went one for four, but reached all four times. The first three times were errors. Four nothing. McAllister leads as the next pitch misses up high, and that'll be ball two. Can three runs or three outs? Keep that in mind. That's how we're going to be approaching this, and that would still, if the Buffaloes can do the job, as this one's going to be a ground ball towards the shortstop. Everyone's got to go. Flips over to second for one. Over to they don't make the throw over to first. They didn't have to tag the runner at second base, which was less now because it's a force out at the bag, but Perry does flip to Montez, and that'll be out number two as it's a RBI fielder's choice for Gunnar Hodgel. Puts runners at first and third with two down for Gannon Mullins, who walked his first time up. Perry made that last play, who was the pitcher in the first game. Sander fires. First pitch, missing high, ball one. So if Stinchcomb scores from third, Buffaloes will send this to the third inning. And here's the pitch. The 1-0 is going to miss into the backstop, and the count moved to 2-0. Again, Stinchcomb staying put over at third. I'm trying to see. Uh, I'm going to go back to Les Now's line from the first game. Again, he had a no-hitter. I'm trying to see how many pitches he threw. As here comes the 2-0. It's going to be a high hit fly ball. This one's carrying but well foul on top of the Hughes Fieldhouse. And the count goes to 2-1. Again, where all great baseballs go to die on top of Hughes Fieldhouse. There's at least, you know, four balls up on top of that roof at any given time. Do they not send someone at the end of the year to go, like, I'm sure they do, retrieve but them? <laughs> it's a one spot where you really can't get that ball. 2-1. Going to catch the outside corner to move the count to two and two. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Lus now threw 41 pitches, so he's good to pitch, you know, Friday or Saturday if they want him. But I'm sure they're going to keep him on his district or pitching schedule. As the two-two, it's going to be popped up in the infield. Who's going to get it? Perry calling everyone off. Perry drops the ball in the infield, and that'll lead to an E6. And then the third run scored by the Buffaloes that makes this a six-nothing game as we head to the top of the third. Buffaloes have scored the maximum in the first and second innings as it's 6 nothing heading to the top of the third here on K. Fit and Madness is here. So brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot. Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell him Maddie sent ya. 
Fenton Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at Fenton Angels Nissan. Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angels Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angels Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angels Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George Night Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. Yet to the third inning, as McAllister's leading 6 nothing, the maximum runs that they can score in this three-run, three-out game. Uh, again, for game two of our district doubleheader with the Tulsa Memorial Chargers, McAllister won game one and looking for the sweep. Here is the first batter of the third. It's Aiden Sander back to the top of the order as the first pitch is up high for ball one. So again, it's a 6 nothing lead if McAllister takes care of business and they do score the runs that they need to score in the first, what would it be, four innings? as the next pitch misses well outside for ball two. And if they can take care of business defensively, then that would still lead to, after five innings, a run rule still being into effect, which would be the ten runs after five innings. As a 2-0 is going to be swung on and missed late on the fastball, Sander, as he swings and misses for strike one. Two balls, one strike. Mullins did a good job of getting himself out of trouble. Had the bases loaded, but a three-pitch strikeout to the bottom of the order got him out of the inning unscathed. As the next pitch crosses the knees with a fastball, and the count moves to two and two. He crossed him up, Brandon. I don't think that's what that means. I think it's a basketball term. Two two is going to be no. He's going to be down on the turf for ball three. Uh, no, cr crossed him up is the correct term in baseball, but that's when you cross up your catcher. Like the catcher's I, expecting I know, one pitch, and you throw a different one. He, they also refer to that whenever you crosses over, not cr crosses no, they up. Crossed him up. <laughs> I guess you can do that too. I'm sorry, did you play basketball? Yes, the 3-2 is going to miss up high for ball four, but not varsity high school basketball. I played pro. For what, the uh, – <laughs> for the for Tropic – For the Eagles. For the uh, – what's the Tropics? Yeah, the Flint, Michigan The Tropics. Flint, Michigan Tropics. Yeah. So Sander – Flint, Michigan Super Bowl. <laughs> Sander walks. He's at first base. Buffalo's lead 6-0, top of the third, nobody out. First pitch is going to be upstairs to Hayden Perry for ball one. Six nothing McAllister leads. Runner first to Sander. And the pitch. This one's in the zone. Moves counting out to one ball and one strike from Mullins. Mullins takes a peek over at first. There's no lead right now by the now he takes gets off the back. Here comes the one one. And this one misses upstairs and moves counting out to two and one. This game began at 5.45. The last one ended shortly after 5. As the next pitch misses outside, and the count is now 3-1. and one. So the previous game lasted just a little over an hour. So it was a very short game, the three-inning run rule for the Buffs. This one is now to about the 40-minute mark, as we're just now at the top of the third. 3-1 pitch, and it's going to be another walk. Fifth free pass given up here by the Buffs here in game two. It brings up Amon Herring as the runners at first and second and nobody out. Herring grounded out at the shortstop. He's so far the only uh, charger to put a ball in play today. From game one and now game two.
Playing in front of the runner is the first baseman, Shumway. First pitch is going to be hit him. <laughs> Batter says it hit him. That means you get to take your base. <laughs> he hit him. He, he's getting back into the right hand of the batter's box, and he's like, it hit me. And he's like, well, then take your base. So that's a hit by pitch, which loads the bases. And Braden Phillips is going to go speak with Gannon Mullins as now bases are loaded with nobody out for Yahir Montez, the cleanup hitter. So oh, this, this has been walk, walk, hit by pitch to begin the third. He's going out there. He's probably saying something along the lines of like, hey, man, did you see all those birds that came through earlier? It, no joke, though. Did you see the birds that went through earlier? That was cool. There was <laughs> see, like a, a flock of birds, but like it, was, it looked, looked pretty dang cool. BG always has this, this sort of talent to be able to tell what they're saying at the pitcher's mound, even though, you know, obviously you can't. You can't. But he imagines. First pitch to Montez as well outside for ball one. And I can also imagine. Buff's trying to get out of this unscathed, but they have some work to do. Count is 1 0 with nobody out. Base is juiced. As here's the pitch from Mullins. This is a fastball that's going to catch the inside corner, move the count to 1 1. So Mullins trying to work back, working out of the windup with the bases loaded and the 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss for strike two. To Montez, who struck out swinging his first time up. Strikeout here would be huge for Mullins and the defense. One, two. Won't get it on this pitch. They're going to back pick over to third, and they can't get the runner at third as it gets out of the glove of Hodgel. It will not allow anyone to advance. I think it would have been a bang-bang play had Hodgel made the catch, but not a guarantee he would have been out on the snap throw to third. Count is 2-2. Two, two. Pitch from Mullins. Going to be curveball nearly hits the batter, and the count now moves to 3-2, and two, a pitch away from walking home a run. Takes a deep breath, the windup, the 3-2 pitch. Fastball outside corner, strike three, got him looking. Put that K backwards, now we'll make it one down here in the top of the third inning. Buffalo's lead 6-0, bases loaded for the Chargers. And it brings up Junior Gazada. First pitch, outside ball one. He was hit by a pitch. He's the young man that was actually hit in the head with the, the curveball from Mullins on a two-strike pitch. But he was fine. And it was, like I said, just the curveball that hit the ear flap of that helmet. 1-0. Big cut. Coming up empty as he swings and misses that one in the turf to move the count to one ball and one strike. Once again, you can see all 50 stars on that flag as the wind's blowing in just the right direction as the 1-1 is going to fill the zone for strike two. It's blowing out to right field, but it's not very strong. It's about, you know, seven miles an hour, seven to eight miles an hour. Maybe nine. But it's <laughs> maybe ten. That's a go to 11. Here's the 1-2 for Mullins. Fastball outside corner. Got another strikeout. Back-to-back -back backwards Ks after... Getting the bases loaded on those three free passes. And now we're a batter away from getting out of the jam. 6 nothing. McAllister leading top of the third inning. Two down for Malik Lofton. First pitch to Lofton. Fastball up and inside. He gets out of the way. Ball one. I don't like jam, Brandon. I like buttered sausage. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Oh, that's Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss for strike. Well, who said jam? Oh, getting now, out of the jam, I see what you're saying. It's that video with Gary yes, Busey. They did the AI yeah. Gary Busey. One ball, one strike. They're like, is that not your jam? He's like, I don't like jam. I like butter sausage. The one one pitch is going to fill the zone with the fastball just above the knees, and the count moves to one, two. Didn't think we'd have an AI Gary Busey reference <laughs> dropped on this broadcast. Mullen's trying to get out of the <clears throat> jam. Here's the one two pitch. It's going to miss outside and now move the count to two and two. So he's trying to get out, I guess, the butter, buttered sausage with two down and the bases loaded. You just throw in curveballs all the time, don't you? Yeah, I like to throw them in there just every now and then. Two, two. Got the letter strike three. Got him looking. After the loads of the bases, back to back to back strikeouts, all backwards K's to be able to get out of it unscathed. It's 6 nothing as McAllister will head to the plate in the bottom of the third. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on 
Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong. Secure and ready to loan. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Okay! Okay! Tire and Auto says come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. Buffaloes are in front of Tulsa Memorial here in game two, six nothing, scoring the maximum. Again, if you're just now joining us, it is three runs or three innings here in the second game of the district doubleheader. We're now to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be the middle of the order after the Buffaloes. Braden Phillips, Aiden Shumway, Spencer Stinchcomb. As here's the first pitch to Phillips. That will be a called strike at the bottom outside part of the zone for strike one. Phillips hit an RBI <coughs> sack fly out to the left field back in the first inning. Here's the 0-1. This one's going to miss upstairs, and that move the count to one ball and one strike. Two out of the three outs recorded by the uh, Chargers here in game two have been to the left fielder, Garcia. That's the next pitch misses up and outside, and count now 2-1. and one. The Buffaloes will be in action after this. That'll be on Friday at home against Red Oak. All games this week are at home. And then we have Saturday at noon against Broken Bow as the 2 one's going to miss down the turf, and the count goes to three balls, one strike, from Aiden Sander to Brayden Phillips. Next week, again, we'll have another doubleheader. So we have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive home games before our next away game after having the last two weeks on the road. And that game next week, those, that doubleheader's on a Monday, correct? 3-1 misses upstairs for ball four. Yes, that'll be on a Monday against Dell City, another district doubleheader. So Phillips draws the walk and it brings up Aiden Shumway, and then McAllister will be back on the excuse me, be back on the road again the next time. It will be next Thursday, and that will be in the Noble Tournament at Midwest City. They play on Friday against Choctaw, and then on Saturday against Norman. The game on Thursday will be one o'clock, and we have a, a balk here by the pitcher Sander. I believe that's his second or third balk here so far, but. Yeah, McAllister had played. Not, I don't know if they were in a tournament last week, but every single game of that tournament has taken off for a third as Phillips. He's able to take third easily after the ball now a steal of third. And yeah, the pitch was way too high for Aiden Shumway for ball one. Uh, even though it was a tournament, you know, still in a lot of tournaments, you are the home team in those tournaments. McAllister was not every single one of those games in Arizona. As the 1-0 misses down the turf for ball two. They were the visiting team on the scoreboards. I mean, they, they batted first for, before this last game against Tulsa Memorial, five straight games. I don't think we've ever had a five-game stretch of every one of them being on the road. But now, like I said, we're about to have a six-game stretch of we're all at home as this next one bounces in the turf. And the count goes to 3-0 and here on Aiden Shumway, who had an RBI single his first time up to improve his hit streak to nine in a row. 
Yeah, April's about to get really, really busy. It's going to be a as here's a pitch that's going to go to the backstop again, and that'll be ball four to Shumway, and it puts runners at first and third with nobody out, and the Buffalo's leading six zero in the bottom of the third inning. But yeah, it's it's a uh, there's about to be some high pressure games coming up in April, and it's going to be really busy on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, obviously with some tournaments. We have a couple of them here: McAllister and one in in Noble, Oklahoma. So here's the first pitch to Stinchcomb, and he flies this one over to left center field. Garcia's already made two catches today. Can he get a third? Yes, he can. Tacking up will be uh, the runner, Braden uh, Phillips, and that will make the score 7-0 on the sack fly from Spencer Stinchcomb. So one down, one runner on. Nate's over first base, and Aiden Shumway. Brings up Jackson Lowerman, who hit a triple his last time up. But after today, McAllister will play again Dell City next week. They're at the bottom of the district as well. Shumway takes off for second. The pitch is a ball. Shumway rounds second, and he can take third if he wants to, but he'll decide to stay put after taking a big turn. So McAllister played the bottom half of the district in their first four games. Their second half will all feature games against the top half of the district, starting off with uh, Tahlequah on April the 8th. And then, of course, on the 9th. Then the very next week, they play Sepulpa on the 15th and 16th. And the week after that, Coweta on the 22nd and 23rd. Three consecutive really stressful weeks as next pitch will be swung on and missed for strike one. Taking third is Shumway. The count goes to two balls and one strike. Buffs are up again 7-0. Sander delivers. This one's going to be popped up. Maybe possible here for the catcher, Herring. And now he'll watch it land on top of the uh, grandstand. And the count now goes to 2-2 two and two on Lowerman. Lowerman on the day is 2-3 for three with two RBIs. A single and a triple on his hits. Trying to drive in Shumway from third. The 2-2. Two -two. This one's going to miss way too high. And behind him as well, and the count moves to three and two here for Lowerman. Cheney's on deck. No, excuse me, Watkins is on deck. Cheney's in the hole. The payoff here from Sander. It's going to miss upstairs as well, and that will, well, according to the scoreboard, that should have been ball four. What'd you have? That should have been ball four. Yeah, now, that's what I had. Yeah, so was uh, two strikes, three balls. It was a full. Lowerman was not taking off at first base at the time, so now he's going to draw the walk. And it brings up Ethan Watkins, who walked his first time up. As soon as you asked that, I uh, had already taken and was moving to the next. Oh, next batter? Yeah, the next batter's count. So I was having to sit here and think for a second, like, what did I have? <laughs> Runners at first and third for the Buffaloes. Lowerman takes off for second. This one's going to be a line drive down the left field line. It's going to hit off the foul line. One run is going to score. As it goes all the way into the corner, two runs are going to score there for uh, Lowerman as Watkins cruises into second with a two-RBI double, and that'll make the score 9 nothing. The Buffaloes have scored their three runs in the third inning, and that means that they will head to the dugout and get ready to take the field. A two-RBI double down the left field line, hitting off of that white line in left field to be able to drive in those two runs. So Watkins uh, continues to uh, have a really good day today with his second double of the day. And we head now to the top of the fourth. McAllister leading 9-0 over uh, Tulsa Memorial here on KNED. Fit and Madness is here. So brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George Night Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on Facebook. 
Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! McAllister Buffalo's leading 9-0 after three full innings of play. We head to the top of the fourth as up to the plate, the bottom of the order, Pablo Garcia, Jonah Vandegaard, and Ronte Stewart. First pitch to Garcia will be swung on and missed for strike one as the Buffalo's again leading 9-0. Mullins in for his uh, fourth inning of work as here is the 0-1 pitch. This one's going to be swung on and missed on a high fastball and the count moves to 0-2. Now I do have a question, Brandon. Um, I understand that they're doing three or three, three runs or... You know, three outs, obviously. 0-2, oh, curveball pulled the string, strike three. Another strikeout here for Gannon Mullins. He's up to nine on the day, and he struck out his last four batters in a row, and that brings up Jonah Vandegaard, who walked his first time up. But if they're doing the three of three rule, does that still mean that the... I believe the run rule would still be in effect. The run rule would be still in effect. I wasn't sure if maybe they that was something they discussed or how it went. First pitch, fastball, filling the zone to Jonah Vandegaard for strike one. Vandegaard walked his first time up. Here's the windup from Mullins and the 0-1 pitch. Here's a check swing. He does go around anyway, and that'll be strike two. Count is now 0-2 to Vandegaard. Can he strike out his fifth batter in a row? Gannon Mullins looking for double-digit strikeouts. Here's the pitch. Curveball, that one didn't leave the hand right, and then this is up and inside to move the count to 1-2. and two. Mullins has loaded the bases twice, but he's worked himself out of it both times. So here's the 1-2. Fastball inside corner, strike three, got him looking. A fifth consecutive strikeout from Gannon Mullins. Sit him down, throw it around. Two down here in the uh, top of the fourth inning. Brings up Ronte Stewart. But yeah, uh, the, when he loaded the bases back in the second inning, he got a strikeout to build in the threat. He loaded the bases with nobody out in the previous inning, but then three consecutive strikeouts to get out of it unscathed as the first pitch will be swung on and missed by Ronte Stewart for strike one. Wind up and the pitch. This one is outside as Phillips tried to bring that back in and frame it. The count moves to one and one. Outfield playing in for the Buffaloes. So here's the one one. Fastball at the knees, strike two. One ball, two strikes. <clears throat> Mullen's looking for a sixth consecutive strikeout. The one two. Yes, he does. Matches his number with six consecutive strikeouts for Gannon Mullins as he's up to 11 on the day. And that will end the bottom of the fourth inning, excuse me, the top of the fourth inning as McAllister has struck out the side. And that sends us now to the bottom of the fourth. We played half a seven-inning ball game. Buffalo's leading 9-0 here on K. Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. 
We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Buffalo's leading 9-0, getting in this three runs, three outs game. If McAllister can score at least one run in this inning, head to the top of the fifth and keep the Chargers scoreless, then they should be able to win it in run roll fashion. First pitch to Jaden Chaney, misses upstairs for ball one. Chaney walked his first time up. <clears throat> and on the season, he is, again, over two with two strikeouts and a walk. Fourth plate appearance of the season for Chaney. This one's going to catch the outside corner to move the count to one ball and one strike. Less now on deck is one for one with an RBI single. Again, a 9 nothing McAllister lead. They've scored the maximum amount of runs that they can score in their first three innings in this three-run, three-out game. So this one will miss high, eye level. Count to now 2-1 and one on Jaden Chaney. Chaney playing right field. The senior for the Buffaloes. Next pitch. This one's going to bounce, and the count moves to 3-1 and one on Chaney. The son of Bridget and Craig Chaney plans to go to college and study in the medical field in his favorite movie, Angels in the Outfield, which is a fantastic movie. A young Joseph Gordon-Levitt, 3-1. Going to miss upstairs, and that will run another walk on Chaney. Yeah, young Joseph Gordon-Levitt in that movie from Angels in the Outfield. And if you've never seen it, then what are you doing? It's the it's my favorite. It's I, it's my I'll favorite. Tell you what I'm it's doing. my favorite Angels movie out of the ones that they made. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey. He's one of the players for the Angels. Yeah, Adrian Brody. Um, a, a doc from. Yeah, Christopher Woods is he's the head angel. Yeah, he's Al. That's cool. It's a star-studded cast. It's a really good movie. Go check out Angels in the Outfield if you have not seen it. Is it a baseball movie? Yes, it's a baseball movie. I'm not movie. watching that, Brandon. <laughs> this that is, this is all the baseball I need right here. Jackson Morgan is pinch hitting for Caden Lust now as the first pitch sells to the backstop for ball one. About to have some new batters coming in as on deck will be number 16, Logan Cease. He'll be hitting for Gunnar Hodgel. Chaney at first base will stay put as the 1-0. Cross the letters for strike one. Uh, Morgan has had two plate appearances this year, and he's walked twice. One against Tulsa Edison, and I believe he went in against, uh, I don't think it was Hugo, I think it was actually Tolleson back last Monday. He's taken off for second as Chaney. So this pitch is going to hit Jackson Morgan, and he still officially does not have an at-bat. He's had three plate appearances on the varsity team this year, and two walks and a hit by pitch. Ethan Watkins, he's coming for you. Again, if you don't catch that reference, Ethan Watkins, I mean, completely leading the team when it comes to free passes with 16, but <laughs> Morgan is trending to, to break that. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Now for Logan Cease. First pitch to Cease is going to be down the middle for strike one. I believe this is Logan Cease's first varsity at bat. And, by the way, Nate Brown tuning in as well says, tell Austin there's no such thing as too much baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant that uh, I really enjoy McAllister. As the 0-1 is going to miss and get all the way to the backstop. And runners advance to second and third to move the count to even at one ball and one strike. What I like to do is go home and, and rewatch the the YouTube side of things. You go watch it, back and watch your, your video work? No, all of your games and nothing but. Thank you. I appreciate that. The 1-1. One, one. It's going to be a ground ball right side. It's going to be a base hit for Logan Cease in his first varsity at bat. One run's going to score. They're going to hold up a uh, Jackson Morgan at third base. And it's an RBI single for Logan Cease. And you never forget your first varsity hit. And that will... Bring up to the plate. Who's that now? Gannon Mullins now. now Did you? Why'd you look over here? I don't have anything written down. No, there's someone uh, that came in. Mary Martin came in. She oh. said, do you want a hot dog? And I said, yes. Please. I thought you were looking at my camera like you was going to find the answer of who was doing what. <laughs> Buffaloes are up 10-0 in the bottom of the fourth inning. For Gannon Mullins, he was 0-1 for in this game. He's walked and uh, reached on an E6. In the previous one, he was 3-3 three for three with two RBIs. I know, I know it's hard. I'm really kind of hoping somebody tries to steal home base. Home plate. Home plate. The plate. You know what I'm talking First about. First pitch misses high for ball one. I, I, you, now you can always tell the people that's never watched Angels in the outfield. 
You know, okay. You know what my low key favorite baseball movie is? Sandlot. That's mine. No, that's that's like everybody's. I know it's like the one. But next one misses up high for ball two. Bull Durham's great too. But my low key, the one that no one ever mentions when they talk about favorite baseball movies, is The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. Oh yeah, I love The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. See, I have a favorite football movie. I have two of them: The Blind Side and The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. Two O misses up and inside for ball three to Gannon Mullins. Three balls, no strikes. Nobody out. Runners at first and third. Remember the Titans is my favorite uh, football movie. Easy. I like, as far as basketball movies go, I like that one with Samuel L. Jackson in it. Uh, 3-0. Coach Carter. Yes. I watched that one the other day. That was, that was fun. Four-pitch walk to Gannon Mullins. Loads the bases. This base is loaded alert. Is brought to you by Pop's Kettle Corn. Choose your flavor of kettle corn or try their freshly made pork rinds. Someone drop something. <laughs> At Pop's I was Kettle Corn that in Old Town. From. That might have been my hot dog. <laughs> Hot <laughs> dogs made out of metal. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, like the, maybe, maybe the carrier dropped. I don't know. And now coming up to the plate, number fifteen. That's Isaiah Timmons. I believe that's number fifteen. First pitch is going to miss upstairs. That is uh, Isaiah Timmons. First pitch is a ball upstairs for ball one. Again, Isaiah Timmons is first varsity at bat. And Nate Brown wanted to chime in, too. He says the fact that Moneyball hasn't come up in this discussion is a tragedy, as the next pitch will be swung on and missed by Timmons to move the count to one ball and one strike. Still nobody out for the Buffaloes with the bases loaded. Again, Pop's kettle corn base is loaded alert as McAllister's up 10-0. Next pitch across the letters. That'll be strike two, League of Their Own, as Derek just mentioned, another great baseball movie. Bench warmers, that's my favorite. Bench warmers, that's, that's par for the. It's, I love bench movie. warmers too, but that is par for the course for your favorite baseball movie. It's just so fun. We were talking about that earlier. How people consider that a bad Rob Schneider film. One two misses up and inside on Timmons. Count moves to two balls and two strikes. And Nate, hey, if if Austin hasn't seen uh, Angels in the Outfield or any of these other movies, he definitely hasn't seen Moneyball. <laughs> Actually, I uh, I haven't, but as a 2-2 bounces into the catcher, Herring. Bases loaded, full count coming up to Isaiah Timmons looking for his first varsity hit. My argument on the Moneyball thing is that I actually wanted to watch Moneyball, mm -hmm. and I went to start the it's movie. It's a great movie. And it was on a, it was on a DVD or Blu-ray, whatever it was. But anyway, the, what I was playing it in messed up. So I didn't actually get to finish watching that one. 3-2 misses way upstairs, and that'll be an RBI walk in Isaiah Timmons' first plate appearance. And we'll see who comes up to the plate next. I think it's going to be Max <laughs> Harmon again. Yep, Max Harmon pinching for Braden Phillips. But uh, and more than likely, Braden Phillips will check back in for uh, Harmon to catch um, uh, Gannon Mullins as the first pitch misses upstairs for ball one. Uh, my favorite uh, recent football movie is hardly any football even being played, and it's draft day. I've never even heard of it's, that one. It's uh, a... Uh, not Kurt Russell. Ke uh, Kevin Costner's in it. He's the GM of the Cleveland Browns. As the first pitch, or rather uh, second pitch, misses and it gets to the backstop for ball two. It's It all takes place in the span of 24 hours. And it's talking about, you know, what went through at this general manager's uh, day of a wild draft day for the NFL draft. As here's the 2-0 to Harmon. As he lines this one. What a catch by the shortstop. Perry snags it. And takes away a base knock from Max Harmon. That's a fantastic catch by the shortstop Hayden Perry. And that'll be out number one. Robbing a hit from Max Harmon. Uh, Spencer Stinchcomb now comes up. I don't think he should be up right now. I think he's batting out of turn. Aiden Shumway would be up right now. We're off one. No, we're not. I, I put uh, Mullins did bat for himself. Okay, I'm off. Yeah, so Stinchcomb is up. Harmon came in, and he hit for uh, Aiden Shumway. What was that last one? Because they haven't changed it on I the don't, scoreboard. I was, I was fixing my scorecard myself. I think I'm going to – yeah, there it is. It was two balls. So right, two balls and no strikes. Still one, one more free pass. If there's a walk or anything, that will make it – 12 spot in the half inning as the next pitch misses down low to Stinchcomb. Stinchcomb in this game has flown out to the left and hit an RBI sack fly. On the day, he is three for four with two RBIs. Glad that Shumway had the opportunity, though, to extend his hit streak. He's again up to nine, which is one of the best that McAllister players had in quite a while, I think. Next pitch misses outside. 
And the count is 3-1 to, well, that's what it says on the scoreboard, three balls, one strike to uh, Spencer Stinchcomb. And the pitch. He popped up, shallow left center field, could land. Trying to go after it as Perry will land, and it's going to be an RBI single as Clark advances over to third. Oh, no, he's out at second. It's going to be a fielder's choice. That's not even a base hit there for uh, Spencer Stinchcomb. It's going to be an RBI fielder's choice, but it, that would have been out number two. It didn't matter. There's still three runs scored. But an RBI fielder's choice because the runner did not get to second base in time. So Stinchcomb does not get the hit, but we head to the top of the fifth inning. The Buffaloes trying to end this game up 12-0 here on KNED. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready. Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. Welcome back to McAllister, Oklahoma. The Buffaloes in run rule territory now as they've scored the maximum 12 runs that they can score in their four innings at the plate. As we head to the top of the fifth, as long as the Chargers don't score three runs themselves, this will be game over, and we will not need to go to a bottom of the fifth, as that will be the 10 runs after five innings. Uh, as coming up to the plate will be the top of the order, though, for the Chargers, starting off with the pitcher Aiden Sander, who is 0-for-1 in this game with the strikeout and a walk. So Mullins trying to complete the... Complete game shutout. It's the first pitch will cross at the knees for strike one. So everyone that got pinch hit four is now back into the game with a re-entrance. You're allowed one of those per game as the next one is going to be in there for strike two. Well, at least you are at the high school level. Uh, obviously, when you get to Major League Baseball, can't re-enter into the game. So count is 0-2. The windup from Mullins and the pitch. That is... Seven consecutive strikeouts for Cannon Mullins. Dating back to the third inning when he loaded the bases, he is in a rhythm right now as it brings up Hayden Perry. That is the 12th strikeout of the day for Mullins. The pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one to Hayden Perry. Perry is struck out swinging and walked. The windup and the pitch from the senior. 0-1 chopper. That's going to break up the uh, sh uh, strikeout streak. Here's a great play by Les. Now try sailing it over to the first base from Shumway, and it goes over the head. It's going to be an infield single because beating it down the first base line anyway was Hayden Perry. It would have been a tough play for the shortstop, Caden Les now. And by the time he threw the ball, even though it sailed over the head of Shumway, it's still a base hit. At least that's what I'm going to rule it here. I don't know what. Game Changers are officially going to rule that as. But I think that should be an infield single. And it brings up Amon Herring. Uh, they're ruling that as, well, they still haven't ruled it as anything yet. First pitch is going to miss upstairs to Herring for ball one. Yeah, they're going to rule it as a single. I feel, feel like it should, too. He already had it beat out down the first base line. That's, that's the hustle play there. Pick off over to first. Now, this one's going to be a throw that gets away from the first baseman. As reaching second base now will be not Perry, who's hitting for him as he gets back into the second base bag. That's going to go down as an error now on McAllister. <laughs> That is Hayden Perry. Why do I have him at number six? <laughs> I don't know why I have them at number six at all. Yeah. That's right. One ball, no strikes. 
Next pitch to Herring is going to be swung on a miss for strike one. Now, a lot of people don't know that. I think I'm just talking to myself and saying that's right. I do have Derek Hadridge behind me that I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Thank you. <laughs> Great conversation. <laughs> Counts one and one. Runner at second and the pitch. Going to be a high oh. hit fly ball. Deep center field. Still going back on it is Watkins, and he'll make the catch. Tagging from second. Here's the throw into third. It's a dart, and he can't handle the ball at third base. Hodgell nearly had it. What a throw against the wind from Ethan Watkins on a frozen rope. Nearly had the runner tagging up from second base. And it was a good shot from Amon Herring, but a great job by Watkins to field it and almost make a fantastic throw. And he did make a fantastic throw, regardless if it was an out or – being safe, but third baseman just couldn't quite just couldn't grasp handle it, it. Yeah, quite get it. But he was close. I mean, that that was good baseball. <laughs> it was a one hopper. Yes, as they say in baseball, let's do that baseball. First pitch to Yair Montez, who struck out twice. Watch the first pitch miss outside for ball one. So runner at third with two down. Top of the fifth. Here's the pitch. This next one does clip the outside corner, and the count rolls to one and one. Looks like the Chargers down to their final out. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss for strike two on the high heater. Can Mullins end his day with his 13th K? The windup and the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. Got him swinging 13 Ks for the senior on a bounce back outing for Gannon Mullins and the McAllister Buffaloes as after losing their last two before this, they win two today to improve to a perfect 6-0 in district play, getting their district runs in the process to go plus uh, 37 now in the runs differential column. Again, McAllister wins 12-0 in uh, four and a half innings. As ladies and gentlemen, Buffalo fans far and wide, grab that brush and paint that win column black and gold. We'll uh, do a little bit of stat keeping here. We'll come back with... Uh, our postgame stats brought to you by Big, Big V Feed Center here in just a moment. You're listening to McAllister Baseball on K. Fit and Madness is here. So brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot. Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent you. Fenton Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at FentonNissan.com. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister. From the team at Reagan Auto, thanks for your business. 
McAllister Buffaloes complete a district sweep over the Tulsa Memorial Chargers here in this doubleheader today as the Buffaloes win 22-0 in three innings in the first game and 12-0 in five innings in the second in the three-runner, three-out uh, format in game two. It's time to look at your post-game stats brought to you by Big Feet Feed Center in McAllister, Hatco Farm and Ranch in Kiowa, and Shakota Wholesale Feed Company in Shakota for your spring feeding program needs. We'll start off with the Tulsa Memorial Chargers, who dropped to 0-5 according to OSSAA rankings. Aiden Sander went 0-2 with a walk and two strikeouts. Hayden Perry went 1-2 with a walk, a single, the only hit today for the Chargers in two games, and he also struck out in his first at-bat. That was an infield single that he had to hit on. Amon Herring went 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch in between. Now here Montez went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Junior uh, Gazada went 0 for 1 with a hit by pitch and a strikeout. Malik Lofton went 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Pablo Garcia went 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Uh, Jonah Vandegaard went 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. And Ronte Stewart went 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. There was one hit by the Chargers. Um, Aiden Sander went the complete four innings on the mound for the Chargers. He did not strike out anybody. He walked or hit 12 batters, and there were three Charger errors, which after having nine in the first game and just two innings on defense, a lot better in game two with just three errors by the Chargers there. And some pretty good play out in left field by, again, Pablo Garcia, who did not start in the first game, made a lot of key outs for the Chargers to be able to uh, force McAllister to really earn their runs when they got two outs on them in multiple innings. So that leads us to the McAllister Buffaloes, who now improved to 9-4 on the year, like we said. 6-0 and in district play and plus 37 in the runs differential column. Caden Lust now went 1-1 one for one with an RBI. Jackson Morgan ended up hitting for him and was hit by a pitch to go 0-0 zero for zero today. Gunnar Hodgel 0-1 for one with a walk and a fielder's choice RBI. Uh, Logan Cease, who hit for him, went 1-1 one for one with an RBI in his uh, first varsity hit. Gannon Mullins went 0-for-1 with two walks and reached on an error in between. Isaiah Timmons hit for Braden Phillips. He went 0-for-0 with an RBI walk. Speaking of Braden Phillips, he went 0-for-0 with a sack fly RBI and a walk. Max Harmon uh, may have hit the hardest ball of the day, and it went straight to the shortstop, Perry, who made a great catch to uh, get the 0-for-1 line out to short. Uh, Aiden Shumway, uh, that was who Harmon ended up hitting for, by the way. Shumway increases his hit streak to nine games in a row with an RBI single in his first bat and also walked. Spencer Stenchcomb went over two with two RBIs, an RBI sack fly, and then kind of got robbed of a hit. Uh, if there wasn't, you know, uh, I think the Buffalo should have maybe had a little bit better base running there at the very end, and if they would have been running on, you know, on a ball that very clearly was going to hit to the outfit, I think that's going to be an easy single for Stingecomb, but instead it ends up being a fielder's choice RBI to go over two with two ribbies today. Jackson Lowerman had a triple, and he also walked. We also had Ethan Watkins. He went one for one with a two RBI double. Jaden Chaney went zero for zero with two walks. Gannon Mullins went the complete five. He, uh, again, only allowed one hit. He struck out 13 and six free passes. Uh, again, after he ended up was after the he loaded the bases on the first three batters of the third. He struck out that was seven in a row, gave up a single, a fly out to center field, and a strikeout to, end to get to get his 13th and a really good bounce back game for Gannon Mullins again. Uh, a, a game that after just he, he knew that he wasn't trending the right way that he wanted to be in the last couple of games. Uh, more walks and strikeouts, and that's never really where you want to be. And he had that against Tulsa Edison despite not giving up any hits. And then there was a little bit more bloop singles and hits against Willow Canyon last week, but still gave up his share of free passes. So to see him get that confidence back, especially near the end where he was starting to roll in the last couple of innings, because it wasn't just you know strikeouts, he was pounding the zone. And to be able to see him continue to do that, uh, that's a good sign in the right direction for the McAllister senior uh, and a vital weapon the Buffaloes can uh, continue to have if he can keep that rolling into what will be a, like we said, a tough, high-pressure uh, April with a lot of key district opponents coming up. Uh, but again, uh, let's look at the hits. McAllister, again, only totaled up five hits as there were, again, 12 free passes given up by the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. Uh, like we said, Mullins just had six today, and there was one McAllister error all day long, and it was in the very uh, end on a pickoff attempt over to first base. So, Buffaloes again win 12 nothing and 5. Uh, there's not much more you can say about this game. You came in, you took care of business, you got uh, some confidence. Uh, you, this was a, a good game, or a good couple of games to have after uh, a really bad loss last Tuesday night against Willow Canyon and then a 10-4 loss that you had against a really good Sunrise Mountain team that's going to be competing for the 5A state championship over in Arizona. To be able to have a couple of bounce-back, feel-good wins 
where you got your hits, you're able to you know increase people's batting average to get them to get. And even if the, it isn't against competition that you're going to see in the likes of Sepulpa and Tahlequah and Kawita, it still does wonders just to see the ball leave your bat to fall into the outfield grass or turf in this instance, get a base hit, and uh, it, it confidence does so much in baseball. And I think a lot of people saw their confidence increase today. And they got to have a, a fun couple of games to be able to win for the Buffaloes, uh, outscoring their opponents by a total of 34 to zero today. So McAllister is going to try to keep it rolling uh, again. They're going to be taking on the Red Oak uh, Eagles, which a team I don't think they have beat in my time here yet. So trying to change that, uh, I'll have to check and see if I'm right about that. But they're always a tough uh, team to play, and that's going to be on Friday back here at Mike Deke Field at 4 o'clock. We encourage everyone to come on out, and if you can't make it, we'll have it back on the Callister Radio uh, in our YouTube channel or on KND, 1150 AM, 98.3 FM, online at McAllisterRadio.com or on the KNED uh, app. So... We'd like to thank our sponsors one final time. Sam Wampler's Freedom Ford, The Bank and A, OK Tire and Auto, Fit and Nissan, Angel's Diner, t Tire, Freeze and Flare, Heat and Air, and Reagan Auto. Austin, anything that you'd like to add before we sign off? Thank me. I was getting to it. Thank, thank me. Go ahead. Thank you, Austin. There we go. I deserve some recognition. If it wasn't for me, we wouldn't be able to have baseball. <laughs> at all <laughs> a big thank you to our board operator for the radio side of things back on the KND studios mr uh wyatt hubbard and as well as our camera operator as we just mentioned austin wheat for his doubleheader work this afternoon and thank you the listener <laughs> for spending your tuesday afternoon with us one final time for mike deke field in McAllister, oklahoma buffaloes win the first one 22-0 and the second 12-0 and two shutout wins until Friday, when McAllister has a Friday bout with Red Oak, this is Brandon Green saying, Buffalo's win, and don't just have a great night. Have a Buffalo night, everybody.